Sure. Um, you know, I talked to Chad earlier, and it looked like we really come down to two, two and a half solutions, and then the question will be, what would be the steps to get to those solutions? And one of them is 100% city costs in paid by taxes by our residents. One ultimately is 50% assessment, 50% taxes, but there's a 70-30 suggestion also in there. Um, and then the 100% assessment, Matt and Ann only had that as the beginning of the transition. So that's really not a solution. So I see us having about two and a half solutions, but they're gonna have a lot of answers in between. Do you, does anyone disagree with that? Okay, um, that's what I thought would be the easiest way since we went to solutions for us to start discussing this completely. Um, so I thought we would start with that 100% city cost solution and see what that means for cost and bonding, Don? Bonding costs or taxing in advance for a project ultimately over a period of time are gonna come out about the same, correct? Correct, yeah. So we're just gonna look at what the tax implication is and you don't have to worry about whether we're doing that one year to be then worked on for projects for the next or whatever it is. And we're gonna work on about a $4 million right now cost and we're gonna work on paying that four million in taxes and what that increase would be. Then we can talk about would we have steps then and what would those steps be if we were trying to, you know, not move immediately to that, but try to do it over X number of years. Somewhere I would guess between maybe 10 and 20 years. Um, so my question to Don is to raise $4 million one year to pay it the next year. So just, just a quick question. Yes, sir. Uh, the agenda and the notes here, there's a lot of information with respect to $4.5 million. Okay. I mean, I, I, just, I, can, I can just share that. So when I went back to my notes from the council retreat, the average over the last 10 years was four and a half. I think the numbers were thrown around four. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference. Four okay, and a half. well then we can do four and a half. I'm yeah. well, that's I fine. think all of Don's stuff is with four. Everything I did was with four and a half. Oh, four and a half? Okay, four. great. Four? Okay. okay. Well, we'll look at that and we can figure out what. Well, then we'll use four. Yeah. I, I just wanted to yep. share the same numbers I had in here to, can yeah, I give you some information? information. Yep. On how many tax exempt properties, so you, you guys saw that. And that's the interesting thing, because the minute you go to 100% taxes, those tax exempt properties, the school district, the churches, the Buddhist temple over here and everything, they don't pay anything for the street. The only way they pay is on a franchise fee or on an assessment. Uh, but they do show, on the Hennepin County website, they do show up as, as paying some property taxes. Not to the city. The city takes 23% of your property taxes. There might be, maybe they pay into other taxing agencies. There's a Hennepin school county district, there's a school county, districts, there's... Okay. Watersheds. So but, that raises a question. Is there a, maybe almost the fourth option or third option, third and a half, where those entities that don't pay property taxes could be charged uh, so, you know, a franchise fee instead of property tax? Would that be even a feasible? You have to treat everybody equally, so you would have to charge everyone that franchise fee. And didn't St. Paul just lose out on a court case in trying to charge the, their Nonprofits, their churches, and everything. So they just lost on something. What was that? Yeah, that was a case where they were specially assessing a lot of um, services like snow removal and stuff like that. So the, the churches were the ones that challenged it. Yeah. And the court ruled that you can't assess those types of services. So they had kind of a a maintenance fee. It wasn't necessarily for the street reconstruction. But they did use like it for streets. Uh, they may have used it for streets, yeah. But the, uh, the court struck that down and said you can't specially assess for those purposes. Okay. 
So is it, is it a state statute that these municipal entities and nonprofits can't be charged for, for these sorts of items or in terms of a property tax? They can't, yeah, property tax, correct. They're, they're tax exempt from property taxes. They can be charged special assessments if they benefit from the project. They can't be charged property taxes. Okay. And the idea of being charged franchise fee, but others being charged property tax. Sounds like Anne suggests that that's not being feasible but, or legally defensible. Well, franchise fee, you have to impose citywide yeah. in an organ yes. and has to apply to all franchise customers. Right. Yes, Kathy. So if I'm following this, if we can't charge, if we go to 100% property tax and we can't charge those entities? Nope. To you me, can't. that does away with this option. That's a lot of, um, Two and a half there's a lot of money more. coming in that we aren't going to be getting that everybody else will have to pay for. Is that correct? Well, two and a half percent of our city is tax exempt properties, correct? Yeah, I would say that those properties are tax exempt in the big scheme of things. The impact is min minimal. They don't pay much now towards. Well, well yeah, they pay an assessment. They pay an REU for every average. So there's 557 tax exempt properties. There's almost 21,000 taxable properties. Of the 557, 450 are city owned parcels. If we're adjacent to a park, we have assessed ourselves in the past. Um, if it's a vital piece of infrastructure like a well house or a lift station that we can't move, then we don't assess ourselves. So, so out of the four and a half million we get a year, how much comes from those entities under the assessment? Just in a round percentage. Well, I just, I would use the, the difference in the properties. If there's only 2%, then 2% of the assessment. Uh, but, but the thing is, is that, to, to your point, Chad, with, with 450 being city owned, you assess yourself, and what do you do? You turn around and put, put, put it on some, some, some homeowner's bill. I mean, it isn't like well, there's money that comes in from elsewhere. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a half of 1%. No, it affects mostly the schools and the churches and the synagogues and if there are some material. And I think also at the end of the day, Don's numbers that you suggested for like a median size property, this is how much we're paying, takes all of those into consideration, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we, we have a number at the end of the day, we know how much each median size property. So I'm overreacting to that. Is that what you well, no, I react to it too, Kathy, because I think that, you know, if you look at a church and you look at how many cars go in and out of it every day and are used and it's using, you know, it has the advantage of the streets and the lights and the sidewalks and, you know, well, they pay franchise fees for sidewalks, so. It, but, it, it, yeah. One last question on that. If there are, there, that's, if you take out the city and the schools, that's about 90 properties uh, that are, not for profit, whatever. They can be charged a special assessment, but not a, a property tax for that. And they can be charged a special assessment if everyone around them is charged okay, a so special that's, assessment. Okay, so that they can't be treated differently yes, from that regard. that's correct. So to Kathy's point, you know, we're gonna have these options, right? The goal, I don't know, <laughs> is hopefully have two or three options and the key points that we share with council on November 17th. So city council, if we go to this, note that the exec tax exempt aren't going to be paying in their fair share, or whatever you want to call it. And I think it's important for us just to say we've noted that. Yeah. Um, and and, and quantify it. Yeah, yeah, and think of this, I'm kind of thinking of this as if you've ever done a family tree. So this is the grandfather, and from down here are going to be the concepts of 100% property taxes, what's the cost over 10 years, over 20 years, over, you know, if we do it that way. You know, what happens if we decide to take sub cut out and pay it with a franchise fee and not with property taxes? Because then, you know, so th there'll be some choices in here for that one. And then we'll flip over to ultimately maybe a 50-50 or who wanted a 70-30? I think that was my Was that idea. yours? Yeah. And we can talk about that when we get over to there. So what is the ramification in one? So let me tell you, let me give you my really easy thing on how you think of your property taxes. 
So think of Edina as a giant pie. And you've got this little slice that you pay in taxes, and only 23.5% of it goes to the city. So you've got this slice. The city cannot get any more money unless it raises what's called its mill rate, or what you see the percentage, and it happens in September, and the final vote is December. Now, as the city gets apartments out here, and you see million dollar houses built in your neighborhood, what that does is it extends the pie bigger. So your slice actually gets a teeny bit smaller, because the value of the city is what you tax on. So to raise more money, Often you'll see the mill rate is going up, you know, let's say 4%. But your house doesn't go up 4% because the value of the city has gotten bigger. So there's more to pay into it. So your 4% increase comes out as your taxable out of maybe two, three, two. two or three. Yeah. So, but what, but what most people don't understand is the amount that the city can take is stagnant, even though, unless they change that mill rate. So even though they see the million dollar house down the street, that's helping them a little bit, squeezing their piece, but it's not really giving any more money to the city unless they change their mill rate. So when they want to give the police an increase of let's say two and a half percent salary and not cut any of snow plowing to do that, then they need to raise the mill rate. So every year, most cities raise, and counties, raise that mill rate, and that is how it works. So Can you help us understand what mill rate is exactly? Is that the percentage of the tax that, that is? I'll let you. Yeah. So we, d my apologies, we don't use the mill rate. We d so it's, it's Sorry, just, it's what I had from years yeah, ago. You know, and again, like I've told some of you, Minnesota has a, a really complicated tax, property mm -hmm. tax system. So what we use is the tax rate. So really it is just based on what our tax capacity is and how much money we need to raise. That's a tax rate. And that tax rate times your tax capacity tells you how much you're paying in taxes. So our tax rate for proposed for this year is it 4.7 20 no nope, the tax rate is 28.9 percent so that's proposed so this could still change by the december meeting so that times your tax capacity would tell you what you're paying so in my and chad you could pull this up even if you wanted to but isn't it we for an example we tax at a hundred dollars and if the tax capacity goes up to um, ten thousand dollars, we still tax at a hundred dollars. That's that flat rate. We we would if we just set it zero, it'd be there. You just pay less if that ten thousand keeps going up, right? Well, yeah, because the tax rate comes stays. Down. So then, if that value of the city goes up, you're, we're still holding a hundred dollars until council says no. We're going to go to one hundred and five dollars to get these right. extra services already. So that's the way I always think about it, is we're holding a flat number until council jets it up. The top number might change, it might come down, right, if all the property values come down, or if we're adding a bunch of apartments in that. Yeah, luckily for us, our value of our houses really has, hasn't fallen, even, even yeah. during the recession in 2008. We held our own, which helped a lot. <clears throat> so, I don't know if that answers, kind of answers. But what I'm saying is, there's no, pot of money other than, you know, 70 some percent of what you pay, it goes to salaries and pensions and, you know, all the medical stuff for your city. So most of city government is the people. And then that other little part. So when we are talking about that property tax increase, it really is something that is on top of what we need just to run the city and to give two and a half percent or three percent increase to fire police we have about four or five unions in the city, and then often what they end up negotiating goes to people in the more central government part as an increase in salary. But there are increases, obviously, in costs. Okay, now, so what, are, what, are, what changes in, in how we tax, Don, to get to that four billion dollars? What would a homeowner see so right, and I always use just a median value home, which was five fifty five hundred fifty one thousand three hundred dollars. 
So this year, they're expected to pay $1,631. So that's what they'd pay in taxes next year. If we increase the levy next year by $4 million. Just for streets. Just Not for streets. for salary increases or anything else. Right, this is the four million dollars for the streets. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. So they would see. So just for the streets, that median value home would pay an additional one hundred sixty dollars. One hundred sixty. Yep. So one seven. You know one. What was it before? Sixteen thirty one. Sixteen thirty one. To one seven ninety. If you tried to do four million just for streets, it would go up one hundred sixty dollars. So a 10% increase. Yep. Interesting. Our tax levy would increase from about 5.9%, the increase in the tax levy over last year, from about 5.9 to 16%. Is that year over year now? Yep. So then it'd be back down. Well, yeah, well, because it'd be built in. Be so, year year. so you do one big jump, and now you're here, and you have now four million in there, and that would, as long as the council held that flat, it'd just be in your, you'd still be paying this seventeen something. So what was the increase? So we went from five, five percent was what? Five point oh, something 5 to sixteen. Five point nine to sixteen percent. Sixteen percent. What are those percentages of the 5.9 and 16? That's an increase in the levy over the previous year. Okay, that's just for the, the median value yep. home. And that no. is, right? No. Oh, that's no, that's the, the levy total, in general. Oh, that's the, ten. the total levy increase is going up okay. without street reconstruction, 5.9%, with additional 4 million, 16%. Okay. So in that 16 is the 5.9. Yep. So the increment is really... So if we did it this year, 10, that's 10. what it would say. The increment is 10, right? Yeah. And just so you know, as a city council person, I've never looked at a number that said 16. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, so we want to be, when we present this, we want to look for a solution, but I think we also want to look for some choices in that solution that might be palatable to them. If you're reading next door right now, there's a group of people that because of the 5.9 want a referendum on it. They want to vote the whole council out about that. Why are they, I mean, ballistic. Um, I only allow myself to read next door once a week, so there's a program for that. I think I'm being slow you on this work on the screen how so people can see it. So hmm? is it on your thing? Yeah, it's on the, do you get, do you, I, we can project all this, so if you want to see the calculation, but so you can I just understand? I'm really being slow in math. If a number is 1600 and it goes, that number goes up by 10 percent, your incidence of five point, it, you'd, you don't, that goes up by 0.59 of 1600. So, how do you go from 65 6 percent to 16 percent? I mean, six per, uh, oh, because 5.9 percent okay. takes us to about 6.6 percent, not 16 percent. So that's where I'm. The the 160 addition is only for streets. It doesn't include a normal city's increase. Right, right. But right. So is that but, why? But the example that Don has, has given is we're only talking about what would happen with this four million dollar reconstruction. We've taken all the raises, everything else off the table. Oh, and so and I agree with Hunter that uh, the it, you're looking at a ten percent increase in in a personal in, in a in a person's home their tax. Yes. Going from sixteen hundred adding hundred and sixty dollars. Yes. Before you have to worry about anything else. Right. Well and then the, 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 what we're struggling with is the math that says Gee, that that the sixteen hundred is a five point nine percent rate of some sort, and that that's going to go all the way to sixteen percent, ten percentage points. I suppose I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Three hundred percent increase. Right. So that five point nine is what this year is proposed. So the example that Don was trying to show you is 
If you take this year where they've already voted on a potentially 5.9, the final vote isn't until December, and we had to add, that's, and 5.9 is kind of a normal year, I'll tell you, in, from my experience. And then on it, let's say this year we'd already voted and the council decided we were going to full assessments next year. That additional money for the $4 million would then move that assessment from a 5.9 increase to a 16%. Maybe we just need 10. to see the calculation because sure. I think we're all struggling with the 16%. Yeah, that's right. Oh. So, oh, yeah, too. so this, so here's your 5.88 right here. This was last year's levy proposed this year. So if I plug, so these are our different levies. So if I plug 4 million bucks in there, So you can see how the levy jumps from the 5.88 to 16. So is the 5.8 cover it? So if you take out the four million. Take out what? If, if you take, if he zeroes out the four million. And so basically there was $41 million that were being generated to the city by a 5.9% levy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Increase, increase, increase in the levy over last year. Yep. Can you put four and a half in there just for the sake of it, since all the rest of the numbers in the sheet are four and a half? Well, all the numbers we've used are four million on this sheet are four and a half. I just put that note in there, but everything we've been talking about to date has been four million. Yeah. But we can, so we can do it. I can do it. Sure. Because that's the average. I just want to see what. Okay. It They'll take it about what to so, eight to so, so the year over year, uh, nope. I, I guess what you was it? So, well, if if we've got to generate forty one yeah. million dollars this year, with without the four, right? What did we have to generate last year? That probably about thirty nine, right? Yeah, let me do it down. Those the prior years in those columns look to the left? No. Yes. Yes? So did we do 39 last year? 39, 4, 67? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So so to go from 39 to 41, which was a $2 million increase, required a, a, an increase of 5.9% in the levy. And now we're saying that for twice that amount. All right. Okay. So makes sense. So, so basically, you take the yeah, so it's it's saying ten percent ten percentage points associated with the four million and five percentage points associated with the two million. <coughs> and if you did four or five, we're at seventeen point two eight. Yeah. I think the confusion was that. We didn't realize that it was really a delta, an increase from year to year <laughs> that goes from 5.9% to 16%. We thought somehow this was an increase. Yeah. And trust me, it took me a year and a half of being a council person to finally figure out how Minnesota right. tax right. works, and not at a very basic level. Well, I mean, the reality is, right, is that what the taxpayers are going to see is they're going to see 17%, they're going to freak out. So yeah. if they did it, then next year you're going to be back to five or whatever percent. Yes, you would be, because you've built that in already. For instance, dollars. this year. But there's a big sales pitch that goes yeah. between yes. the where we are today, yeah. like, why are you raising yeah. my taxes by exactly. 17%? Yeah. 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 We're going to pay for everybody else's street. Then you yeah. can yeah. understand what that then leads to in the conversation with yeah. people. Yeah. Um, so let's say we were going to. But at the end of the end of the day, I mean, the, the four million dollars is driving a ten percent change in what they actually see out of pocket. So to talk about it as seventeen percent, it, it's really not. I mean, I understand. I understand that point. About it. There, there's a marketing issue, but at the end of the day, it's a ten percent. This is a ten percent impact. Well, four and a half would be twelve. But yes, yes. Because they were going to get six anyway. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then I will say though that this number isn't exactly static. It won't go back exactly to five nine because construction inflation usually runs hot. Yes. Inflation, mm -hmm. yeah. which means that's going to have to be adjusted for every single year moving forward. Yeah. Right. 
right? That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, materials, especially right now, are running hot. But I think Rolf's point is that it is, in a sense, a presentation or a marketing point that, yeah. you know, it's, yes. it really yeah. is, is. And I'm just going to tell you, as a council person, that one year of marketing isn't probably going to make it for me. And the people that are going to vote on this are the two newly elected people. And then the mayor, who's got no one running against him, and then Stoughton and Anderson, who have two more years on their term. So we're not going to make two departing council people vote and then enforce this on two new people that are going to be there for four years. You're going to wait, and we may present. We'll probably wait to even present until January, because why present in December and then have to repeat all this? We're not going to do the Supreme Court Act. No, we are not. <laughs> exactly. I'm Amy Klobuchar, and we're not doing that. Um, I did listen to her today. Um, so, so there's this, this large bite you have to take out of the apple. And how then can we stage it? One, because you have two issues here. You have a 10 to 12 percent increase just for that alone. And you have people that are still paying that now are paying for other people. So how would we make a transition if you're going to 100%? Would we make it, you know, 5% less for 20 years, 5% each year, someone would pay less on an assessment, and the city would then collect ahead of time that, you know, whatever that 5% cost would be? Are we doing 10? Do you have a direction? You, Because I'm not a 100% person, so I need anyone out here who thinks 100% is a great idea, to tell me how they would like to stage some sort of transition. Well, the, the second option that I, it, it, the vision was 100%. And one of the options that I, it, based on your feedback that the council was unwilling to go there, mm -hmm. year one, was to do a five year, six, actually a six year pro, uh, process. Year number one, the city pays for subcut and the other things that we've kind of come to a group as is somewhat of an agreement. Mm -hmm. And then year two would be would go from a hundred to eighty percent, from eighty to sixty percent, sixty to forty percent, so that at the end of six years you were at that hundred percent. The one challenge that I the pros and cons in my mind of phasing it over a certain period, whether that's five years or 25 years, is that, again, you've got that marketing issue. So it, do you fight that battle five years, or do you fight that battle one year? Well, I would tell you your marketing issue really is one year. Because let's pretend that the subcut is the same as the first 20% that you drop assessments. Let's just pretend, just for the sake of figuring the, the math out on this, that it's the same. Once you've increased it, that percent, mm -hmm. for the first year, well then, yeah, you're right, the second year you've got to do the same thing. So what's a 20% of your, are we working on four million five or four million guys? Four, what, four million. Okay, so uh, for four million dollars, the increase in taxes to bring I think in. The increments are going to go down. It's not going to be made because the base is increasing. Well, the, so what do we? The, the, imp, the impact, so, instead of ten, a, a, a 10 percentage point impact in year one, you'd spread it out over, in effect, six years. So some, some, the, some, some kind of another cost that we'll just say is 20% of what the $4 million is the first year. And the next year's is 20% less assessments each year. So 20%, 40%, 60, 80. We pay for all of it. Yeah, so me, six years. Yeah, let me tell you, tell you what I did. We can run any scenario the group wants to. So this shows how we can make a transition. So I took a 10-year time period, just because the math was easy. 10 years, 100%. So this is kind of what that means. Mm -hmm. I have a 10-year to 50%. That's you know, so from a tax impact standpoint, that's pretty easy to do. Mm -hmm. I did a five year at 50% and then I did a one year at 50%. Quite honestly, I love the one year at 50% because <laughs> you just bite the bullet and then you're done. But you know, so you can just see. 
So with the 10 year, we need to increase taxes by 4%, the, the impact, or by 400,000, the impact is 1%, it's fairly minimal. Chad, if you go to the 10 year at 50%, it's 200 over 10 years. That's, quite honestly, we would, that's a rounding error in the city's budget. So that would be an easy thing to do. Five year at 50%, that's a little tight, it just goes back to 400. The one year at 50%, I did this one just to see if, if this was what the group wanted to do, five years at 50%, how much cash would we need to come up with outside of a property tax or something else? And so if you can, you can just see that to do this, we would need $4 million over that time period to get to this scenario. Yeah, the numbers don't look down. This one looks like the, which one do you want to talk about? The five year or the one year? I want to talk about the one year. Okay. So to keep the levy at. Which, which line? Highlight the line. Can, can, yeah, can you yeah. highlight the Go up to the levy amount. No. This one? Under 20, under 20, right yeah. there. So to keep the levy amount relatively stable at that 400, but we would go to 50% in that first year, you can just right below that. It shows a $2 million levy on a $4 million project. So we're at 50% in the first year. Mm -hmm. we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna levy 400, but I need to come up with 1.6 million in cash. So where's that cash coming from? And then, so that just plays down because we're increasing the levy. Right here, this is your cash numbers. Yep. So over four years to the transition you need $4 million. Yep. So the only thing that I, I look at in this that I think is, I'm not going to call it an error, but it doesn't appear you're inflating the street reconstruction funding at all in the calculation, which is not true. Right? Well, so you're talking the, about inflation. What is the cost of inflation? In so that's the benefit of special assessments, right? Because we calculate every year, we assess the number. Every year that's in the number. This would be a little, a different way where we're setting a flat number. So as inflation goes, we'll be able to do less mileage of streets every year. And eventually we'd have to see that burn rate after five years and then maybe we go back to council and ask the question of, we need to get caught back up on a burn rate for miles of streets to stay on schedule. Special assessments, we never have to go back because we just calculate it every year. So Matt, you're right in that. You're but already, you could do it based on what you think it's going to cost. You're already doing that. Than on this year's numbers. Uh -huh. and you're already doing that with pay increases and hiring and whatever, whatever else. So to, to say that you're not going to take that into account. Well, you could. You're, yes, so Ralph, I agree. You could. You could yeah. It could not mm -hmm. just be a flat fee. Yeah. It could be right. the flat fee plus inflation or yes. whatever, however you yeah. want to. Yeah, so you don't have to say none of these numbers are going to be correct net tomorrow. So what we did, we made an assumption that the annual levy is going up by 5%, period, which is, you know, it's anybody's guess, mm -hmm. you know. So the intent of this was really just to set up the model right. so we can decide as a group what are the assumptions. We can plug the assumptions and then work backwards to determine what the impacts are. There's a way to make this transition. It really just depends on how, how the group would like to do it. So I think this goes to Ann's point about a flow chart, right? Option one, and then do we share any of these with council? Or which ones do the task force want to share? Which well, that's, tax, that's right? assuming 100% property tax. So that one yep. basically goes to there, and is it how many years? How many is years? It, is it next, well, it can't be next year because we're already put in our assessments. It would have to be in 2021 yep. for 2022. But it could be a 10-year basis. Yeah, it, it could, could be, be five years or 100%. Right. Do we, do we have an option five year 100%? We don't have that. I don't. <laughs> but it'd just be double this, right? About. Instead of 1%, it'd be 2%. Uh, it'd just be double the five year 50%. So well, like for example, I just looked at National Highway Construction Cost Index. If you were started in Q1 of 2013 and ended in Q1 of 2020, the price is now 94% more than it was in 2003. 
So 17 years later, your cost almost doubles. So I'm, I'm just saying, like that's yeah. Whenever you're be we staring down a barrel of probably yeah. Seven million dollars in 2032. If you wanted to maintain the same amount of money that you're doing. So if you were going to write this, I, what I hear you saying, Matt, is whatever transition method we use, we should probably write some sort of inflation. Well, I mean, I would hope the council would consider that. Because yeah. Those are costs that are otherwise. Well, I think it would be ones. worth recommending. Right. Yes, Thomas. So, so my only question is really, since the property value also goes up. If you have a fixed percentage, just theoretically, wouldn't that automatically? You don't get more because the property value increases. You get more when you change that number. That oh, is what you have to the understand. Stuff. That's where yep. it, holds, it holds at hundred dollars. This yeah, keeps yeah, yeah. going up yep. until you actually have council make an action and raise it. Which kind of creates, honestly, Hamid, it creates more outrage than is necessary because if the city's property value grew over time and then we decide that we're going to leave everything flat, that's a zero, yeah. right? But if you're going to go up for inflation, not even add anything, you're still probably looking at like a three. Is that right, Don? Mm -hmm. Not even adding anything to your budget, it's still a three. Yeah. So, you know. Are there, are there cases, like maybe I should ask David this, yeah, ask uh, of, of instances where the mill rate itself gets adjusted uh, over course over course of time, so that if the property value goes up by say five percent, four, three, four percent a year, uh, mill rates get get adjusted for in either in the in other cities. Because that mm. you're right. That's that's one of the one of the concerns. That is right. That would be a no, the only change. way it gets changed is by a, a vote of yes. council. Yeah, and, and, and so and actually a chart would be really. I mean, rather than uh, laying it out on a spreadsheet would be really helpful yes. for, for you so know, the, the so average on. person to understand. Because the point you're making is that you know today, say there's a hundred million dollars worth of real estate value in a diner that you set a mill you set a tax rate to cover that thirty nine million that forty one million dollars, and that if if the value of all of yep all of the data goes up, you don't collect any more than that $39 million. Correct. Yeah, so Chad, go back to my property tax. Spreadsheet. This one? Yep, scroll to the top. So, and I just, Ralph and Hamid, this is what you're talking about. So that's our tax capacity. And you can just see how it breaks down. So the taxable valuation, you see that Chad, the 145 right there? Yep. And then right below that, the tax capacity used for the local rate is 141.4. So if that number goes up, and we keep, nothing changes, expenses stay the same, the tax rate obviously goes down, and so you will pay less tax because the tax rate is lower. So that makes a difference, yeah, no question. I'll give you a perfect example. So in 2022, so we have the Southdale 2 tax increment district. So in 2022. The money I have to spend by December of 2019 at the foundation, that, that one you're talking about? The money we need to spend on affordable housing. So there is approximately six and a half million dollars in tax capacity on that piece of property. When that goes to our tax, to our valuation in 2022, this is just automatically gonna go up with no new construction, no nothing, just because it's not gonna be in a tax increment district anymore. Mm -hmm. That automatically, without changing anything, we can raise an additional and these numbers are rough because it's not perfect. We can raise an additional $1.2 million just by that coming out of a tax increment district with nothing else changing. And it goes to the school district at the same time and the county at the same yep. time and the watershed district. So yeah, everything makes, you know, new valuation makes a huge difference. And if we want it, and, and we can take advantage of it by raising the tax rate, increasing the amount of expenses or giving it back to the taxpayers. 
Let me just make sure I'm getting some of the terminology straight. When we talk about the tax rate, and we talk about this 5.9% increase. Is that a 5.9% increase? Is that uh, an increase in the tax rate? No. Then, well, then how is that 5.9% rate? Take that $400 out. That's okay. it? Yeah. So that's the increase in levy year over year, 5.8%. Le levy being, that's not? The dollars amount, the amount of dollars we're going to spend. Right. So scroll down. The additional money we're asking for to get back in taxes so to be able to run the city. So but is that 5.9% is is that increase, uh, is that raised by the, 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 the prop from the property owners? Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it will but be. But it's not changing the tax rate. Yes, the tax rate does change. Okay. So if you go see the 27.9, okay, so this right here, that was last year's tax rate. Right. It's going to 28.7. Okay. So it, that's where the additional fund comes Yeah, but that's okay. just the last two. In the, the previous year, it actually went down. So, so is your number of 5.7 an average of the four years, or is it just the last two years, the last you see what I'm saying? It's the last two. That's the last two. Yeah. Last two. Yeah. 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 You took the 41 million, yep. subtracted the 39 million, right. divided, by divided that into the 39 million, yeah. it'd be the 5.9%. Right. And Don, can you refresh my memory on municipal finance? Why is it 28%? Is that it presumes that there's a hole, which is almost four times the 40 million. So we have the ability, if we wanted to, by some statutory requirement to be able to tax 160 million a year? Like, well, how does CAS tax capacity determine? Oh, man. So. I'm not even touching that. I mean, I mean, so every. What is the divisor, I guess, is the question that I'm asking. Yeah, tax, so every property, it, it's determined by the class rate. So I'll just use residential properties. That's probably the easiest thing. So a residential property, it's, and I'm gonna be generic. So a, a $500,000 a $500, house, market value, the class rate for single family properties is 1%. So that tax capacity is $5,000. So every property is based on their class rate that's how that tax capacity number is calculated. Commercial has a different one. Um, apartments, you know, so they all have different class rates. So that's how it's determined. But we're getting kind of in the weeds on this tax thing. So this isn't going to be the kind of conversation that the council's gonna have on whatever we bring forward. They're gonna look at the cost of how we are suggesting they transition or change the policy and what that cost is. And, you know, it's great to the median one, but, you know, obviously along the spectrum between the few 200 and some thousand dollar houses we have and the many million, million three, two million, we have, it, it takes an even bigger jump. So, mm -hmm. you know, I get that you're interested in how the city taxes, but I'm just telling you, I don't, I think we need to work more towards what are we going to recommend for the transition? How are we going to explain it just in very simplified terms what that increase would look like over X number of years and why we think that that would be a fair way to make a transition and et cetera. So with that in mind, would you, would you mind going through the 10 year 50% model and just show us what happens with that? So this says the 10 year 50% is saying that over 10 years we get to 50% in property taxes and 50% assessed. Yeah. And so the so the increase in the levy is only 200,000. Now, is taking though Matt's point that we are going to recommend that they probably build in inflation to the cost the of these projects. Well, sure. but, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's it's 200,000 year 1. 400,000 year two, 600,000. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, but if you look at my, the street reconstruction funding is static at 4 million, even though it's going to be inflating at 4 to 5% a year. Right. Right. 
that fair? This model, so, we're hearing that we should incorporate inflation and we can run models yeah. like that. Is I mean, that I did the calculus for the last yeah. 10 no, years. No, I actually, I think. Our construction was 3% inflation is what I saw in the last I don't think years. we want to suggest a pathway for them that will hit a roadblock yeah. for so what they can do. Yep. And they'll tell Chad, gee, I'm sorry, you could do five projects a year, but now you're, dead, you're down to one or two. We don't want to recommend a transition that does that. I think Matt's point that we need to recommend something that includes inflation is probably a correct way to go. I'd like to make a comment here. So I agree with Matt's point about inflation, absolutely. Yes. I do think that a 10-year transition is probably, in my view, for my preference, would be probably too long. I would either want to see, if I want to go for a 10 year, I'd like to see a little bit of a different breakdown in terms of the as special assessment versus, versus taxes, or I'd rather, I prefer to stay with a five year. I realize that's a difficult, slightly more difficult selling point. So I think we give them both. I see what you mean. I don't think, provide them you know, I always said I didn't think everybody would settle just on one right. okay. plan, just and I'm still I'm fine with that. So if the original plan was 100%, but a group recommended a five-year, and a group recommended a 10-year or a 20-year switch, whatever it was, mm -hmm. then we'll have a couple options for them. And here's what this costs. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just as an aside, and it's not on the chart, but I would say one interesting thing to consider would be maybe 15 years, because that's how long you could theoretically have deferred your payment into your property tax. And I mean, it's not a clean math thing for you, Don, and I apologize, but you know, it makes it a little easier for those people that still have 15 years of property taxes to go in their assessment. Just an idea. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, that's good. I was thinking 10 more, because what we found out last time was the churn is 4%, so the average it on a residence is 25 years. That's about half of 25, mm -hmm. and it's an easier number than 12 and a half. So I was thinking longer rather than shorter, but 15 makes sense too. Does something, does something like that, a 15-year transition, does that create overwhelming complexity for city finance? Or you can, for the next guy, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds complicated to me. I don't you know, once it's set up, it's yeah. okay. not complicated. All right, but it's just math, I guess. The thing that we always have to keep in mind, the longer that we stretch out the transition, the more variables there are in the mm -hmm. out year. Yeah. It, you know, we had the housing dip, and so obviously market value came down, tax capacity came down, and if we're out in the later years and we're, yeah, I mean, it'll impact tax rates and so on and so forth. So just. The longer it is, the uh, more variables. Yeah, well, that's we've all. never gone 15 years without having the conversation about it again, though. Yeah. This anyway, is the third the time in the 16 years <laughs> I've been involved with the city. So, well, as an aside, I mean, I understand your point about numbers, but the the, the, the equation would be pretty simple to set up because it's mm -hmm. going from 100 percent to 50. Mm -hmm. So, if you were doing that, it's well, three and a half percent a year or something mm -hmm. like that yeah. is the slice that the city pays for every single year. Right? It's really irrelevant of what the number for the street reconstruction funding is. It's just what percentage skew goes between yeah, the property right. tax payer mm -hmm. and the assessed. Right, it's just, it's just math. Mm -hmm. No, David, I'm hoping that that means that we will take less risk of trying to prove the benefit to the property by taking some of it off, whether it's all of it or 50, up 10 down to 50% or something. Would that be your assumption? Yes, so we currently assessed for 100% of the project cost. And we're getting into the range now where that makes it hard to prove benefit. So obviously the less you assess and the more you pay for out of other revenue streams, the less difficulty you have proving benefit because the assessment doesn't reach sort of the point where you're getting sure. past the point of benefiting the property. So what, in one scenario that we're going to look at, we go to 50% assessment, 50% tax, and work our way down to 50. 50 is obviously going to be relatively easy to prove benefit, would you say? Much easier. Much uh, easier, sorry. Twice as easy. Most, yeah, twice as easy. Uh, <laughs> most cities uh, assess in the metro area, assess around 40%. Okay. 
So then we become closer to most cities, even yes. at 50 versus 100. Yes. OK. Yeah, you're going to draw far fewer challenges assessing a 50% of project cost than 100%. Okay. Actually, that was going to be one of my suggestions because remembering David's point about 40% from a while back, I was going to suggest maybe we should also have a 40% option. I mean, now, it, it, because we're going to present these to the council as different alternatives, let them decide. So we've talked about, uh, you know, 70, 30% in the other direction. But I've been thinking about the 40% number that David had mentioned. I think 40%, uh, uh, you know, would be would be certainly one that goes along with the medium, but or, you know, on other municipalities, and uh, would be probably even easier to sell. Okay, we could have that. Yes, Kathy. It, it seems to me that we're talking about you know five year, ten year, or the fifteen. I think what we should do for the city is give them all three and you know bullet point the um, the pluses and minuses to it. Because we've heard some of the pluses right here, you know, that it's going to be easier to um, quantify the the, um, the gain or whatever you yeah. would call it, and that the 15 lines up with that, and let the, let the city have some see what our reasoning is why we gave them these three. Right. So there's seven of us. I would prefer not to give them seven ideas. That's too many. We I'll be three. honest. I know, but I mean, but then you get. But, so do we have any coalescence in our, as a group, between five years or the six if we're taking on subcut, 10, 15? So what, yes, Chad? Wouldn't it be maybe wise to get the options out first? So I've heard 100%, I've heard 50%, 70%, now I heard 40%, before we talk about the years of transition. Is there a difference in someone's mind over the years of transition, depending on what we're transitioning to in the solution? Because there's a much bigger transition if we're going to 100%. Yes. You know, and if you're going to 40% assessments or 70%. But I heard Matt suggest 15% because currently that is what we allow someone to pay mm -hmm. back if they had, no, if they were being. 15 years. Well, 15 yeah. years. Yeah. 15 years, I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, yes. The, uh, I, I think what we've gone through so far is, is, is good to get a sense at least of you know, what the 100% looks like and the scale. Um, when we get to thinking about 100 or 50-50 or 70-30 or 40-60 or whatever, it seems to me that that gets to our, our sense of what's the equitable fair split. And maybe we should just talk about that. You know, if we look at these options, what do we think is the right split between the city and the homeowners? Sure. Matt, you raised your hand. So one of the challenges that I've had with the 100% property tax option is if you conceive of that half the city has done it to date, paid an assessment, the other half has not. So if we shifted, if we wave a magic wand and tomorrow everything's 100% property tax, right? You're essentially saying that half the city paid 100% and then they're going to pay 50% of the other people's uh, assessment, and then the other people are only going to pay 50%. So there's like a clear winner and a loser in that, in my opinion. Yeah, well, it, I agree. It, it, it's actually not 50%. I mean, given yeah, that the city's been done, I mean, you're saying then we're divided the whole thing. A lot of people have paid. So, so ultimately, they get to 50%, but it be so over right the now, 50% of the roads have been done. But as Don shared earlier, there's a turnover within the city. And, and so as those people leave, you know, if, even if you say it's just 2%, not 4% turnover, 2% actually leave, there's only 25% of the people who are still here. They who, leave their house. They don't necessarily leave the city. Yeah. For example, I, I paid one assessment, and I'm probably going to have to pay another one because I now live in a house that hasn't been assessed. And I'm fine with that. But and, and to Don's point, the 4% what was just people who moved. It, was, it wasn't about whether they left the city or not. And that's why I say, if, even if you shrink that to say 2% of the people actually leave, only 25% of the households who currently live have experienced a street assessment. 
Well, you're telling me the math, but even if it's 25, it's people we have to be mindful of. Well, I, I don't disagree. I'm, I'm just saying that it's not 50 percent. I think the fact that there is mobility suggests that this is the equity, the equity, equity issue that you think about, which is correct, by the way, I agree with that, is not as, uh, as you yourself point out, yes. is not as uh, strong a point as, right. you know, that's all. I mean, it, it, you, you turn that around, you say, is it fair that people live here for 25, 30 years and never pay assessments? Mm -hmm. I agree with you, too. So so to, me, the struggle, to me, the struggle is, though, we have enough of this group of people that I think it would be hard to go to 100%. So the, the, what I'm getting at, I guess, is that I don't know how we do the transition in such a way that there aren't going to be a lot of people that are frustrated if at least a portion of this isn't still assessed. Does that make sense? I concur with that. It makes sense to me. Yeah, we're not going to be able to please everybody, right? So right. I think right. we have to try to find something we think is fair in the long run and doesn't hurt too many people in the short run. Yes, uh, and, 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 you know, at least in my mind, I'm trying to balance when you look at the street reconstruction, which historically has been special assessment in a diner, I and mean, people kind of have it in their heads that if you live on the street, you're paying for it. And now we're going to a different model of some sort, people can say, what was wrong with the special assessment? A lot of people will, uh, who have either already paid or uh, who have that expectation that that's what the system is. And, and there's going to be a, a thinking, why do we, why should I be paying for what's going on across town? I'll pay for what's happening in front of me. So I think the, you know, what I'm trying to struggle with is what is the right balance between what I should pay for for the street in front of me versus what I should pay for for the whole town. And, you know, on a, you know, on, a, on an end game sort of perspective. And I, that's how I came up with the 70 30, thinking there's, you know, 70% is probably supportable from evaluation uh, in terms of the increase, increase in the property value. Maybe that number's not quite right, but maybe a little more than 50%. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of on the people living there. Smart. But then the city does, you know, everyone gets a benefit from, from being having a city with good growth, so we should pay for some of that. And how do you eat, uh, in, in the, the more you put in the special assessment, the less, you know, you know, angst you're going to get from people who've already paid once or twice, right? So 70, 30, the 70 part is assessment? Right. And I got that number basically because I, it seemed to me that was a, a number that would be pretty supportable by property values from what the information we've given before. David, do you think that number is fairly supportable by property values? <coughs> I think you're still going to draw a significant number of challenges at assessing 70% of project costs. Maybe that's not the right number. That's what, yeah. I've just, no, but we have him until six I wanted to use yeah. him, so. Um, so, you're somewhere here? Is that what I hear you saying? Where are you? I'm at 50%, but over 10 or 15 years. Okay. Ultimately, where are you, Kathy? You know, I propose 50-50, but again, not immediate. So, yeah, no, I get that. No, I'm thinking, and solution. Let's just talk about now, how we're going to get there. I got 50-50 huh? for five years. I'm willing to go. Okay, there. but if it were five years. But mm -hmm. you, you, you're comfortable with 50-50 for five, but if I said 10 or 15, you would say no? I just I can't say no. Yes. Okay. Well, ten, I don't know, but fifteen, I would be. Okay. Well, you know, I, I, I think when you look at, you say, all right, what, what's the goal? If it's if it's not going to be a hundred percent. Yeah. If if it's not going to be a hundred percent, then you know, what's the rationale of why you know? And, and we we want to say we're comparable to other cities. Uh, you know, again, what's you know. What's that end point? You know, I, I still think it's 100% uh, assessment. It's just a question of how long you take to get there. Okay. Yes. You okay. So you stay with a. You, you stayed with property. Property. Sorry, 100% 100, 100 property, property tax. Sorry. Sorry. So really, that's where you are. Okay. And Matt. 
Are we talking end goal or? End goal. I mean, end goal, as I've kind of stated throughout, is I think we should continue with some version of what we're doing now until we finish round one, and then we need to get to 100% something else, or I'm okay with like 50 50. Okay. I'm a, and you're the. Well, I mean, philosophically, I'm with Rolf. But I, as a practical solution, I'm, I'm, I, can, I, can, I can accept a 50-50 solution for five years. But philosophically, I really think that Rolf has a point in that really public goods have to be paid out of you know, public funds. So that's, that's an input. OK. I mean, my viewpoint essentially Anne, is that if we were to start over, I really think that the paying on an annual basis makes the most sense, because you're paying for the utility that you use while you live in. But I think the challenge is that we're already halfway through. So that's how I see it. Okay. But we have a fairly <laughs> okay. comfortable with 50 50 depending on how the transition is to it. So, Except for Ralph. So just, just to come back to that, that point it, is that to say you're going to wait for the entire cycle to, to then say, well, that's the right time to change. The situation won't be any different then. Okay. Well, we're going to have a couple answers. Yeah. So I don't need you to convince somebody else that what you think is the right way. Okay? I think that's yeah. just going to get us mired into not being able to come up with something. So let's it's, just assume not, we're going to have help. It's, and not we'll right, have it's not right or wrong. It's, it's a question of the, the Matt, Matt perceives that the situation will have changed if we wait for 100% of the, the roads to be done. My point is, is that our situation will be exactly the same 25 years from now as it is today. So just real briefly, and then we can move on. But you know, I propose doing the trust fund, which is me to grow a balance over time. So the concept of that is that everyone is sort of held the same in terms of their standing until we finish it off. But if we're contributing to this trust fund, there's a pool of money that say the first 10 years, you can even burn down the trust fund burn the balance down so you don't really have to see an increase in terms of those fees until the balance is gone and then we're all paying on a franchise fee or something like that. You could do any number of different things. Mm -hmm. My point is, is that that is the thing that helps ease the transition in a way where we're reflecting uniformly throughout the next 25 years to and give to something. I'll tell you, it is the transition and the fairness mm -hmm. yeah. that they all, they'll always get hung up on. Mm -hmm. I was always hung up on that. The council would be hung up on that. And that's what they'll hear from different residents, too. So I but think. I imagine that's why they ask for help from us to think about that fairness. Well, that yeah, transition. and you can tell how much we've agonized over this and all the information right. that we've needed. On, it's not an easy thing to talk about. Right. So Can I just make one point about the transition? I mean, every time we have a change in the law and policy, we're going to have people that are affected differently before and after. So if we worry so much about this issue, we're not ever going to be able to change any law and any, any, any policy, right? So the question is how we know that, that, that there is going to be an issue of it. We'll never will be able to totally solve the issue of fairness. No, you're right. So the question is maybe to minimize the pain or something like that. It is, this is why, while well, philosophically I go, I agree with Rolf, I'm willing to think about this issue of transition that Matt points out for other point be and say, look, uh, we have to find a way, and I see the 50-50 as, as, a, as a compromise between the different perspectives, really, as opposed to one that really solves the council's problem. I, I know it doesn't really. In a way. And I will tell you that what the council has done previously hasn't been completely fair. When you do a franchise fee and start paying for the curb and getter and making everyone pay that had some unfairness to it, especially if you don't like franchise fees, but it was a small step. So what I'm telling you is that if we can figure out a way to offer them small steps to get to one or two solutions, we're going to be successful as a task force in helping them make a move. Otherwise, they're going to become paralyzed again. So, you know, so if we focus on, let's just focus on two of these right now. That was supposed to be a stand. That was a really bad stand. And then talk about transitions to get there. So is, are we saying that part of our transition is this subcut now? Because I heard who had the idea that year one would be, thank you, subcut. 
and then we would have X number of years after that in transition. Is that, is everyone comfortable having subtep be the first year of transition? And what does that mean? We, we take it out of the assessments? Yes. So I did a little analysis. So basically every project has some subcut. It is in every project we looked at the last 10 years. So I didn't do percentages, but so I came up with in the meeting agenda, you know, if it's less 10%, we'd have to generate about 450,000. I'm guessing a range of 450,000 to 1.1 million per year for subcut. So it's that's Almost. because different projects are different. And exactly. Sometimes it's going to be 450, sometimes yeah. it's going to be more than that. So that's kind of a range. to a, a million? Yep. Per so year for subcut. So that's pretty big. Sometimes. That's potentially quite big. Potentially. What was like, the average of the last five years? So I didn't dive into him. the numbers out. So I'm only that. asking because I don't want Don to have to like be back in and adding things out every every year, right? Because you're going to have like a lot of whips. Well, and that's what if so we come out of. So you want to maybe average for five years and say, okay, this is what the city's going to put on top of it. Well, and that's what I would do if we right. came up with an option of what what's the yeah. task force want sure. to see. Then I'd dive into those numbers more. I didn't have time. No. I thought let's no, get a range. Fine. Yeah. To talk. It's fine. I, it, I'm just saying that you don't have to do the council every year and have a different number. So we talked yeah, about no. subcut. We talked about the walls being built sometimes in neighborhoods. Um, we talked about lighting. Yep, so those three, we got some numbers. So if we put all three of those together. So street lighting, just I'll give the background. Street lighting, we go out with a survey to the residents before every street re reconstruction project. We say, are you interested in lighting in your neighborhood? If you are, that's going to be an extra $1,000 to $2,500 per RU, so basically per single family home. Most of the time we get the responses and no one's interested in street lighting. Arden, so Arden Avenue, south of 50th, put in three lights? We had three, four lights in there that were just completely falling over and we had to. So we asked the council, we just need to do it and we assessed them. We did one neighborhood down here about 10 years ago, Bramer Hills, just off Gleason and they paid and that was like $1,000 per RU. So typically street lighting is left for when it falls over and it's just completely in shambles. I see an issue with that going forward that eventually we're going to have to do something for street lighting. Well, and I would, if we didn't have that sidewalk franchise, or franchise fee, we wouldn't have put in the sidewalks we have today. I can tell you that right now. Because sidewalks are my deal for a dozen years on the council. And it was a battle every time because we made the neighborhood pay for the sidewalk, and then they didn't want to do it. The minute we came up with a hundred, how much a year? Hundred thousand dollars? About two. One point two million a year. Oh, one point two million a year. Sorry. Yep. Um, then all of a sudden we were able to put in sidewalks, and if you look about around at the community areas of our community that have gotten them, they're really well used, and we try to make them go to schools, and we try to make them go to parks, and connections like from Woodvale over to Concord for the school. Um, so there's some things that I would call quality of life things that I would really like the city to pay for. And to me, lighting is the other part of that. Because as you walk in your neighborhood, especially now when it gets dark and it's gonna get darker and we're all gonna probably try to walk more. You know, if you're just going from Cobra Light to Cobra Light in the corners with nothing in between, it doesn't feel that great and it doesn't feel particularly safe and you know so i'm kind of advocating to this group right now this is my podium i'm standing on for lighting do i have any so let me just ask a question about the lighting is that typically been looked at as part of street reconstruction mm -hmm. not separate from re street reconstruction it's been part of other than just general maintenance so when i say only half the people would even want to pay for it. Half of them don't want lights, right? Half people like really dark streets and half of them like <laughs> lighted sidewalks. And so it's even a fight, just even if they didn't have to pay for it, it's an issue of right. but where do we it, put is it? Is it uneconomic to do street lights independent of, of street reconstruction? You, yeah. you can because you're horizontal drilling conduit in. So we could come back after a recon. But it never gets done. And, put, and it never gets done. Basically, we're just patching it together. A lot of the lights out there are mostly owned by Excel Energy. We just pay a fee to maintain that Cobra head light. Okay. That's at the intersections only in most neighborhoods. So that's where you get those mid-block where it's really dark if you're walking 
Um, Matt, you your hand up. Yeah, I, 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 with lights and walls, I struggle. And I'm going to say this because there are whole parts of the city that have lights, and there are other parts that don't have lights. There was a wall in particular on Overholt Pass that I don't think we should be paying for. It's on a residence lot, and there's like eight cars that go up that road. Uh, and that would have dramatically changed the REUs for much lower value homes on the other side, which was grouped together as a project, which you and I have had this conversation. I disagree with how the project was grouped because uh, there was no direct linkage between Overholt Pass and Pawnee and all that, or not Pawnee. Sally Lane and Maya and Sally. Yep. But they linked it together anyway. So I, I don't know. I just I feel like a lot of that stuff is sort of either resident choice or something else, and I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's really part of what we're talking about. So the only thing I'll, the caveat on retaining walls, typically the one walls you see adjacent to a roadway were cut in there and put in place because of the street. Okay. So then there's some where they wrap onto a driveway and then the homeowner decided to keep doing walls. Those are definitely private. But I can look at as built and say that wall was built because of the street. That's where I think it's city. So how do I fund it? That's where we struggle. And there are really our opportunities in the past have been during the street reconstruction program. So we came up with a number that council once wasn't comfortable with that uh, retaining wall being in the assessment and they just said, we'll deal with the wall later. So now we have like 100,000 a year just to basically fix walls that are falling over. So we wait till they basically are laying on the ground and we try to fix them. And that number barely keeps up with those ones that are just tipping over. I'd like to be a little bit more proactive on the walls. So when's the opportunity? I always think it's during recon. So that's why the, it's one of those things we threw in the agenda over these meetings just to have a discussion on. So I don't know, I mean, I just think there needs to be a little bit more judicious thought about those items, in particular okay. the wall and overhold, I was very frustrated with, and we've had this conversation, yep. so. But I think there are probably homeowners uh, who moved into a place that has a retaining wall, and it was their understanding and everybody's understanding that that's a city mm -hmm. deal. And so to, to switch, you know, directions on them and say, no, now that's yours. Well, I wouldn't recommend that. No, right. I'm, I'm no, just no, struggling. But I, how do we keep I want to I keep, I want to keep it maintained. Yeah. And then when given the opportunity to do the street, I want to be able to do it within that project on the cost of the city because that's the only way we can do that street is to build that retaining wall. Similar to when we put a sidewalk. Yeah. And if you've ever gone down Interlochen, there's that sidewalk now right by interlock and circle, it's a, and it's a giant wall right there. But that was part of the cost of putting in the sidewalk. Well. Um, so will you put on your council hat for this question? So I'm just looking at the numbers and we talk about if we put all this stuff on the city and there's no transition politically for us to take on a million or whatever the number is in one year to do subcut and lighting, it's gonna be a challenge. Yeah. So when we think about adding these things, this is not gonna be, I don't think this is gonna be as easy as we may think it is. There may need to be a transition to taking on the subcut. Well, that's, actually that's kind of why I wanted to have this conversation at the beginning of talking about a transition to the rest of it because there are some, what I call, unmet needs in the city, and this is one of them. And I just don't know where this group feels, Ralph. So I guess it was my understanding, and, and correct me if this isn't correct, Alan, it was my understanding that the subcut uh, and uh, walls and street, street lighting or you know, all those issues were in that if you will, four million dollars a year. Street lighting is not in there because we don't ever do it. Retaining walls, a small so fraction. Mm -hmm. So the project Matt was referencing from last year, we didn't include yeah. it. There's been some, I'm trying to think of some tiny <coughs> walls, right? If you look at... Um, but, I, but I guess my point being is that those things were in the, uh, the, the four million not. dollar average. Just a little bit of the retaining wall. Subcut well, is. Subcut is. I understand. And no lighting. Really, no lighting. Yeah. That, that, that's fine. Subcut is. But that subcut and walls were were in that four million dollar average. And and so 
Yeah, and I'm really talking about the year one. Yeah. If we take this out and I have to come up with a million bucks, yeah. I don't see it happening. So we're assuming a million dollars just for subcut over a small amount of walls. Right? And, and maybe maybe subcut isn't the answer. But yep. I felt, I mean, the reason I, I suggested subcut was because I thought there was consensus on the group that the, sit, the, the roadway should have been done to a certain standard initially. And that didn't happen for whatever reason. Different standards. And, and that mm -hmm. to, to, to hold one neighborhood responsible for that that happened 40 years ago, and another that who either was done right or doesn't have the issue, that that wasn't fair or equitable. Take the randomness right. of what where you buy a house right. in town, Correct. happen to have soils that are good yep. or bad, is take right. that out of the equation was always yep. the discussion. So then you're saying to raise a million dollars is about a 4% increase? Well, it's a quarter, it's a quarter of what, what's up there. Yeah. Well, here's a here's a question for the group, and this is really gonna throw things out of whack. Oh, Sorry, no. don't do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going back to Matt's point. I mean, is do you do anything with the special assessment period if you take out subcut and everything else? Does that impact the dollar amount so much? that there's really no challenge with the appeals? So if you took out those items, we'd be at basically 75% assessments. So I think there's still, we're starting to see he those benefit letters. 70% he still wasn't. Those totally benefit letters are still seeing us near that benefit thing that we'd probably get challenged on. So yeah, my, it would my, get us halfway to 50%. Yeah, my, yeah, my challenge with the, with the lighting is that there, we don't have a uniform policy for it. There's like whole spots of the city that are dark. There's other parts of the city that are lit. I mean, you're in the lit part of the city, I'm in the dark part of the city, right? So I, you used to be in the lit part of the city. I used to be in the lit <laughs> part of the city. I like the dark part of the city better, actually. Okay. So I don't want any street lights. Well, and I'm not saying <laughs> that, I would say that there would be, if you put in street lighting, the Cobra lights work to light an intersection. And Excel is starting to put in LED Cobra lights when we redo it. So we're getting some, at least, you know, environmental good changes for the cobra lights. And, but if all of a sudden you went to a neighborhood and you said, well, you like street lights and they're not going to cost you. You might be in the dark part of the city and you go, no, no, we like this country feel out here. Or you might be in an area where your kids are trying to walk to school and the time changes, we fall. Do we fall behind in the fall? Is that when it gets so dark? So and your kids walk home in the dark and you would like lights along the pathway to school. You know, you'd probably like a sidewalk right now for your son to be able to walk down to school. I you know, I, those, those are kind of what I look at as quality of life things. And if you weren't telling the residents you have to pay X number of thousands of dollars more for the street light halfway down your block, then you might have residents who all of a sudden decide the dark isn't so great. And I have a perfect example of this, that Kellogg Oak Lawn neighborhood just parallel to Arden Park. They were the last project we did before we started paying for the curves. And they were gonna have to pay extra on, you know, we live in the country. I got these letters, you would have thought they had sheep on their front lawn. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the year after that, we came up with a way as a utility fund fee to pay for curbs and we mandated them. That was the other thing. And not those surmountable ones. We wanted them square so the snow plows didn't have to mark the street. That's a savings, actually. For these guys, they don't have to go mark the street in, in the fall. And all of a sudden, the sheep were gone and they wanted us to be able to put the curbs in after their new street had gone in. So really, I, I'm gonna tell you if you at least can offer it, but make it a choice. Um, I think it's not a bad thing to do. Kathy and then, no. okay, you were just arranging. Kathy first. Well, I think what was just said a few minutes ago, it's interesting that we took the sub cut out and um, lighting walls, et cetera, we ended up at 75%, which is kind of like one of our options. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess the question I'd ask Dave and, and Chad is, I, I didn't think from our conversation a couple weeks ago, Chad, that we get a lot of concern about meeting the, um, the, uh, the benefit tests? Yes, 
I didn't think we got a lot of concern about that. We get people that don't like to pay their bills, but I'm not sure I heard that we're getting very much of that. So I, I'd like to hear a little more about that because this might be a good option to think about without a lot of transition. So there's, we were challenged in the one David helped represent us for White Oaks. We actually went court on that. Yes, I know that. And there was another neighborhood, Birch Crest, who started to file and they had a, the same attorney had 30 or 40, I mean, they had a big chunk of that neighborhood. When they saw the results of the other case, they said, we're not going to win, and they went away. So we, did, we haven't had a lot of court cases, but I'm starting to see some neighborhoods out there that I can, we will not be able to support the benefit Well, Tom, it is a good example. Yeah. Yep, because of the density of those neighborhoods, so prospect, but, and also because rolling of the value green. Of the density. What's that? Because of the va variability. In the exactly. Yeah. Not only the density, but there's homes that are 300,000 and there's homes 3 million. So there's such a variety in there that most of them could support it, but there's 10% that can't. So how do we? My home is five, about 550, and I live next to the United uh, CEO, whose yeah. home is about 6 million. And you know, it's not going to be fair to me so, to make the same yeah. amount of yeah. assessment. That's so right. I see a struggle coming if we if we stay okay, at 100 or 75. I didn't think we had a history of that being. We don't. I just see it coming with some of these neighborhoods with these unique characteristics. No, I mean, if you look at the, uh, the Southdale area, the homes that are being, you know, taken, they're, they're buying them for three hundred thousand dollars and putting up a million dollar, million point, you know, two million dollar home, one point two million dollar home, you know, in these nineteen fifties Ramblers neighbor neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think if, if we come back to some cut, I think it would be incorrect to say it's going to take care of twenty five percent of the problem because it's. It's a bigger issue for a smaller subset of people. So it isn't like a 25% reduction across the board. No. It's a huge impact to the people that it affects. Yes. Yeah, and I would say it ranges anywhere. I put on there about 10% yep. to 25 So I agree with you that there is that subset. So do I kind of hear a conversation with Matt and then I'll, that maybe 70 isn't where we want to be? Maybe we, if we were going to some sort of split, we maybe need to, David, get down below 70? That's what I'd recommend. Okay. I'd recommend something lower. Okay. Uh, you know, proving special benefit for a new street is extremely difficult. We haven't had a lot of challenges so far. We've had a few more, more often in the last couple of years. I think they're going to start to increase, okay. uh, especially when it comes to just getting a new street and not getting, you know, I mean, a diamond is fully developed. You're not extending sewer and water on any property for the first time. You just have a street in the before, you have a street in the after. People come in and say, that provides me no benefit. Like, I expect to have a street in the before, and I expect to have a street in the after. And I'm not an engineer. I don't understand payment condition index. They just say, I had a street before, I have a street in the after. You're telling me that that increased the value of my home by $20,000. <laughs> I say it increased the value of my home by zero. So it's hard to prove benefit when you have that situation. You can get appraisers for the city that will say that there is benefit. They can tease it out in an analysis mathematically, but just from a common sense standpoint, a lot of people feel like it does not provide whatever the amount, you know, if it's got a $20,000 assessment, they say having a street before, having a street after does not provide me a $20,000 increase in the price of my home. David, and then Matt. Yeah, I just want to go back briefly to retaining walls. So, Chad, you're saying that we should be spending one hundred dollars to 300000 but we're not? Yes. I'd and say there's some built in just on these tiny walls where there isn't a big impact to the assessments, right? I have a contingency in the assessments. Uh -huh. If it falls in there, usually these little land and stone walls, the one on, on Indian Hills project was so big that it moved that assessment up about $3,000 per RU. Okay. So that's where I thought we needed money. <laughs> oh, wait, I have another question when you get back. Can I ask a quick lawyer question? Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So every year we usually do two or three different projects. And I never thought about this when we were having a conversation with you. So each project, you take the total cost and divide that by the REUs. Is there any way to help maybe alleviate the big or small ones? If we took all of the projects that are happening in the city for an entire year and divided among all the households in all of the projects collectively, does that make sense? Mm. So you're, Doesn't you're there the have all the way to be across town. 
But I'm just saying that you can kind of level out the six million five hundred thousand dollar home, throw them in with the country club groups, and then your average for the project. That would be hard to prove benefit. One, it would be hard to prove benefit, and two, you'd be in different lot size things. Does that cause an issue for you? Well, so the reason it usually works out and doesn't work out in your neighborhood is usually, you know, larger lots have larger street frontage. So if you have, you know, this uh, similar sized lots and you do on a front foot basis, it all comes out kind of the same. Or if it's already used, you know, they generate, if you do it on a traffic generation basis, you know, no matter what the house is big or house is small, it generates roughly the same amount of vehicle traffic. So it tends to come out the same. But that starts, to, you start to lose that uniformity if you spread it farther, you know, in different neighborhoods where you have much smaller lots and much smaller houses. And then also you know, so across town, larger lots, larger houses, you don't get the same kind of. Well, I might be ticked if I lived in a $350,000 house and I was in the million and a half dollar other neighborhood and then I, we were all paying the same. That wouldn't look equitable to me as a homeowner. with the overhold pass and the salary. Yeah, I know, I know you get from that. Just, just <laughs> well, I, mean, I, 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 no, I say, get that, I heard you ah, that. The, the second problem is that you include that in the office, there's no way to connect the project with that, but you make it down. Each, each assessment is very large. It's so. asphalt. Bigger, bigger lot, more asphalt, it's the cost of asphalt. Asphalt's expensive. Can I ask another lawyer question? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, also, I mean, just as a practical matter, you're letting particular contracts, a particular project, to go to different contractors. So I don't think you, I mean, I'm not sure from a logistical standpoint how you lump them all together for assessment purposes when they're yeah. being yeah. competitively bid among different contractors for different projects. Yes. Kathy has a question for you, David, you know, before you go. You know, it's what I emailed you about a little bit. I'm still not clear on the whole idea of what's uniform. Because one of the proposals I had was to do it by, um, per thousand or ten thousand of um, value. property value. Yeah. And to me that sounds uniform. I think you could cap it, if you want to do caps, you could cap it on a front foot basis or a REU basis. I don't think you should try to take into account tax value of the property. It has to match up with your the basis of your assessment, which your, your assessment is never based on the tax value of the property, it's based on front foot of the new street that you're constructing or REU traffic generation. So if you want to do some kind of cap, I think you should cap it on that basis rather than on the taxable value basis because then it connects back to the basis of your assessment. Does that make sense? No, I'm not following that. So that to me, uniform means you're treating everyone the same. So if it's per linear foot or per thousand dollars, Aren't those both examples of something being uniform? But in the case of Med's neighborhood, you're going to have a house worth 300000 right next to the house worth $3 million. And they're, neighbor, they're going to have a different assessment, and that's not uniform across right. properties, right? You can't. Well, even so it was, well the process is yeah. uniform, the dollars aren't. But, well, I guess the point is that in terms of R&D, they may be somewhat different, not that different. But in other words, the $3 million house or $5 million house is not 10, doesn't have 10 times the REU of the, of the other, the smaller house. So there is that. It might be getting 10 times the increase in value. That, that's right. The value does, but the, actually, in a sense, it's a, addressing. But that means that they're paying more because they have a bigger house, not because they drive in and out of their driveway more times. Right. But the value might be more. Yeah, but. So, I guess the question, Kathy, is is how does your the value that you're thinking of how does that differ from just saying we're going to assess it as a percentage of your overall value and and you know a hundred percent assessment versus trying to divvy it up project by project. I mean, at the end of the day, what you're coming back to is val you know, the value of the home. Drives so what's the value of the assessment on a two million yes, dollar house because I increase part of for that four million dollars. Make sure we do is that if it's one hundred and sixty dollars on a five hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. Yes, if, so. how, how do I mean trying to split that up project by project? You'd have two conversations. Uh, oh, yeah. how, how does that differ from <laughs> just saying, well, I'm just going to assess 
the whole city, uh, you know, 100 percent for the projects it's done, and, and that and that assessment by its nature is based oh, on the value. That's true. That's true. I was trying to find something to make an easier transition. We could still stay with assessments if we did it a little bit differently. So, but you're right. I, I don't disagree with what you just said. That I mean, we take a break at six when David has to leave. What uniform? Is that okay? We're consistent. Well, I walked out when David was asking some questions. Yeah, so the second part of the question is, is the reason that we're not spending what we should because there's a, a resident choice in whether we're taking walls to replace? Not a resident choice. The saying. number got, we laid it out with, here's your street assessment and here's four retaining walls and the council just doesn't support that additional okay. so it's broken 2,000. And, and this was kind of the first, that overhauled Shawnee was really the first time we saw just a huge increase in those assessments associated with retaining walls. And I started looking around town and I came up with a lot of examples like we're going to hit that one. And these are eight to ten foot multi-level land and stone walls that I would want to include in the project. So mm -hmm. it was okay. just raising that awareness of the walls okay. that are coming. I so Kathy, a house that is, we're going to raise $4 million on, if the house is worth $550,000, their tax change is by $160 a year. If it's a house next door and it's worth $2 million, their taxes change by? 6000 6000 mm. No, so six, no, that's six hundred maybe. No, six thousand. Four times. What's their current number? What's it, what's their current number? No, that's not four times. That's that's right. so it's six hundred. It's well, well, six, 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 if the house is valued four times what what the smaller house is, it's going to be six hundred forty. It, 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 it isn't necessarily just a straight four times one hundred and sixty because mm -hmm. the tax rate changes significantly as the value of the home increases. Correct, yeah, so it's the way the tax is calculated on higher value homes. So anything above 500,000, the tax capacity is 1.25%. So Is that that circuit breaker? Oh, I don't know if it's this. It's the home street creditor, yeah, thank you. I was thinking that. Well, the, the homestead credit, so that's a market value exclusion, so that applies right. to lower value homes. Mm -hmm. 504000 I think, is what it is. Yeah, I don't know what I mean. It was so what, what that example is telling you is you have the house oh. next to Hamid. Let's say it was a $2 million house next to Hamid, and it's his, and he might be spending $160 more a year mm -hmm. For his new street, that's the same amount of asphalt, and he's going in and out maybe just as many times as his big house next to him. But they're playing that much more on an average yearly basis. I'm still not convinced by the $6,000, even if the rate is capped somewhat, because maybe it sounds, sounds like there's a regressivity built into this. Well, I guess I is, it, is it relevant to the conversation? We're at, right? No, I was just yeah. trying to give, trying to give an example. For example Kathy. for Kathy, so she would understand that in trying to look at it, that even though you have the same size lot, same amount of asphalt, if you're yeah, trying to do it based on the value of the home and and its taxable value, then in, it's very disparate right. treatment. In our current well, policy, is, but I, you know, I think the Trump. underlying assumption is: are we more concerned about? Like you said, everybody uses the, the street just as much. Dollars. Or are we concerned about the proposed formula? Yeah. It's $672. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, or, too many. But to your point, we, our policy is based on the number of trips per. Number of per, trips. So if you're a, you would think the number of trips are roughly the same. But somewhere in all of this, I've learned that we also believe there's a 1% to 2% gain in property value. And that's been in my head too. And it's more than that. Well, if it's more than that, then it even strengthens kind of where I'm coming from that if they're gaining more, they should pay more. And I wouldn't grab onto that number. We've talked about this a few times. <laughs> that's just a relevation that I've seen with the benefit letters that we've done. They've typically been seeing a benefit of 1 to 2% of the property value. There's no 
linkage. I, I almost wish I wouldn't have thrown that out. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> in response to your concern, I mean, you were saying, Anna, if they all use the streets and they all like yep. the streets, I'm just saying if they're all gaining more, then that's where my thinking was coming from. No, there's a benefit, but then how do you determine that benefit? I mean, if you're looking at having the higher value homes pay a higher share, I mean, you really want to look more toward just paying it out of property taxes because that's a design to tax it in that way. Yeah, that's right. Does that make sense? I was thinking about transition. Yeah. If I may just add again, same, same you know, word here. I think, given this, uh, the, the point that just Don just made, you know, it shows the regressivity of a special assessment in, in instances like ours relative to the, the equitable nature of the, of the property tax approach. Because the property tax, are, on one hand, it ties the benefit, whatever that is, to the, to the cost. On the other hand, it doesn't have the situation where two homes with such vastly different values have to be the same special assessment. I think that is why you know, while we're talking about inequity of those who've paid versus those who haven't paid, there's this other inequity that, that could be legally challenged and all those kinds of other things that, that comes in. You know, I don't know, I would just say that I view it as a user fee, just like gasoline tax, which it doesn't matter if you're in a $6 million home or a $300,000 home, you are paying the same tax. So like there's, there, the roads to me are a little bit of a different deal. But. But it's so arbitrary, and 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 so uh, there's such a, a lot of variability in what someone ends up or doesn't end up paying. As we said, is that there are people who who haven't paid an assessment at all and live here for 30 plus years, and there are other people like yourself that pay twice, and and so. Which is why, to me, I was looking at franchise fee and thinking that if we all just raised it collectively on a monthly basis, that's why I would actually prefer the franchise fee approach, just you know, as an aside. And I would tell you that we can't, we're not going to be able to get the electric and the gas companies to raise, they get to vote on what it was proposed as a franchise fee increase, and they are not going to, they are not going to support a or a $5 million franchise fee increase. So, you know, we might be able to do it for lighting or... Retaining walls? Retaining walls. Um, but we're never going to be able to cover that 100% um, cost by franchise fee. So on that point, uh, when I first talked about franchises when we began our meetings, if you remember. I had spoken with the city engineer over at um, uh, St. Louis, Louis Park, and they seem to have raised perhaps not quite $4 million, dollars before, but, but fair amount on franchise fees. Now, I don't know how they ex excel at center point agree to that, but it sounds like some of these neighboring cities have managed to raise a fair amount of franchise fees, and am I wrong about that? Well, they don't, we already have 2.4 million yeah. franchise fees well, for yeah. other things, so, so they don't have that. That, that, that right. on to right. have right. that. So and trying to add on to what we already call And they might have difficult. different property classes, because every class is charged a different fee, so if you have more commercials, you're gonna raise more, it's much easier. Ours is almost exclusively single family homes, so it's harder to raise the same amount of money as a different community that's got a different property mix. So does anyone else, if David has to leave at six, have any question that comes to mind right now that we need him to answer? Well, I'm attending my next meeting by Zoom, so I can stay until 6.15 if that helps. I'm just trying to figure out when we're going to take a break. What do you want to do? Well, we can always get you questions, too, afterwards. Yeah, I can respond to emails or yeah. telephone or Zoom, whatever you want. Yeah. I think we're good. Okay. Do you we've already prepaid you, so we'd like a credit. Well, I uh, left the 30000 in my other jacket, so I'll get that uh, down real quick. There is one other question. You sent me an email. The question came from the group, and part of my oh. thing was to reiterate that we can't refund past assessments. So could you just elaborate yes. on the yeah. answer that, that you gave me in an email? Well, so I thought about that. So I don't 
think that you can refund, at least the statute says that if you determine the previous assessment was excessive, you can reassess. You can go through the same process and you can reduce the assessment. If you do the whole notice and publication and have public hearing and all that stuff, you can reduce it. I don't see anything in there that says you can just refund it. Now, maybe you could do that and, you know, so if someone challenge, I mean, if, if you're giving back money, who's going to challenge you, right? <laughs> so maybe you can get away with it. I just don't see a basis in the statute to do it. The, the oh, thing that, you can reduce it retroactively? You yes. can reduce it retroactively. If you found that it was originally excessive, you can reduce it retroactively. But you have to go through a, a pretty long, complicated, and uh, the process that has some expense to it. Plus, yeah. then you have to have the money yeah. to send out right. to refund. If, if, if the desire was to try to um, reduce the burden on people who recently paid in for a street assessment going forward when they're being hit for you know, a, a, you know, a, a bump in their property taxes, is there any way to give those folks who are paying off on a street assessment either a reduced tax rate or a credit against their taxes for what they paid or will be paid? Uh, is that different from what you just said? Well, Kathy yes, has been looking at what Elk River did, so I, I did that as well. And basically what they did was they went to a franchise fee and then they offered a rebate on the franchise fee for people that had a special assessment within the previous whatever number of years. And uh, once again, I think they, you know, I'm not sure that there's anything in the statute that says you can do that, but they did it and they're giving back money so nobody was complaining and nobody challenged it and it seems to have worked, so. But that was across the board. No, so there wasn't, they weren't giving back money, but they instituted a franchise fee and then they said, if you've been assessed the last five years, come and sign a waiver. We won't charge you the franchise fee for this year. Then you had to remember to do it year two, year three, but they own the utility their own utility, so. Yeah, and I thought about that. Would that have allowed them to do it? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that, you know, if you put the onus on the property owner to bring in a copy of your bill and show that you paid your bill and it's, there's an item on there, line item for franchise fee, and you say, I had an assessment, you know, within the time period, I paid this franchise fee, I'm applying for my rebate, I think the city could rebate it in that situation. So did they move, the group move from a 100% uh, assessment to 100% franchise fee? No, they okay. went from about a 25% assessment to a zero assessment. Nobody does 100%. We're the only city that's at 100%. I mean, in your meeting minutes, I got the neighboring cities. So, yeah. you know, yeah. you so saw kind of the breakdown there of other yeah. ones. 100% is unheard of in the, in the mm -hmm. state. Yeah, and actually the trend has been lately toward zero assessment and 100% property tax. That's what Minnetonka yep. does. I think you've got a couple of this right. here. It looks like that's what St. Louis Park does. Are they do franchise fees. Yeah. Bloomington, there's a kind of a mix of. Yeah. So okay, okay, we could think about that and maybe run it by you, but there might be a way to give some relief to people that have recently paid. Um, we don't think so. We don't I think so. <laughs> yeah. So all the ways that people have done this or cities have done this, I think uh, there's not a lot of legal basis for it. They made it, Elk River, I think, kind of did it and got away with it. Um, but they did it on franchise fees and none of us are talking about using franchise fees to pay for streets. Yeah. And, and to your point, they own the utility, so. Right. Uh, because you're, you're putting a big onus on the utility to mm -hmm. then administer yes. the rebate yeah. and the, you know, so I just wanted to make sure we, yeah. we talked about it. I think we're hearing that it's, I think your other discussions here are more relevant about transition and the turnover of, prop, of homeowners and all that stuff. I mean, everything we've heard doesn't feel like there's a way to refund. Yes, Helen. Pertaining to that, that point, if I may. So um, is the fact that the utility was owned by this, part of this community, uh, you think pertinent? Uh, or su suppose, as you pointed out, suppose you provide credit for previous previous assessment for that same purpose. Because in a sense, we're saying this extra $4 million or whatever, the extra tax is somehow earmarked. Um, is there any way to say, okay, you paid, you, you get credit for what's been, what we are now going to be, you know, spending on, so therefore for the past, so credit towards what? 
You're it's saying it can't be in your tax. Can't be a tax. You can't have a different tax yeah. amount. You can't have a different tax across. And, and so, I mean, if you think about that, and and if you say 25 percent of the people who currently live here have experienced something that they could go back and say, I own the home, I I I paid this special assessment. So then, the other 75 percent of the people need to make up that credit. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. because that twenty five percent isn't paying yep. for the four, the four million that you need. I don't think that's a direction that we want to go. I'm going to tell you that I think it's way too complicated. I think legally there isn't a lot of ground to stand on. And what we're trying to bring forward is a solution that legally, when they ask David, will this work? as a council, and he can look at them and say, yes, you know, you can, let's say we go to a 50-50 with some sort of transition. Yes, I can prove that if they're only being assessed 50%, that that's the enough value increase that I can prove it. So I, I think we're looking for something that is kind of one of those rock solid and not, well, maybe we could do this because, you know, if River got away with it, I'm going to tell you the council doesn't want to do that. Okay, let's take a break. Um, okay. well, we have about 45 minutes. Okay. And I think the goal is to try to see what we want to have Don and I run for models and get ready for this council work session. And if you need more, yeah, you can use that paper over there and all that stuff. So for right now, let's take out this one. I think we heard from David that's harder for him to work what with. What did you take out? I can't see the colors. Oh, 70% assessment, 30%. Your solution. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's Do it so I can't see it. Thank you. Come to the chase. Come to the chase. <laughs> so let's just go to these right now. We can always switch and have later have Don figure another one. And then we have the issues of transition. So does anyone support a transition to 100% in one year? No. Okay. Does anyone support a transition to 50-50 in one year? I don't see a lot of them. Okay. Now I know you said that you might be able to support 50-50 if it was over five years. At most five years. Is that including sub doing subcut in there, or is right. it six years because we're doing the first year subcut, maybe walls, maybe not, and then five years of transition? Um, I have to think about that. Okay. I mean, the five year is the maximum I want to go. So. Okay. I'd rather leave the subcut, if that's going to be the choice, I'd rather just leave the subcut in and do 50 50 instead of. My, my rationale for the subcut being year one was that um, it, it would be easy to justify, easier to justify to the residents that that's really a city cost. Yes. The other thing is, is that by doing that year one, whichever, whatever year one is, that it it doesn't unduly benefit, if you will, people who are on that verge of being assessed. Mm -hmm. And so it isn't an immediate impact to that particular group. Is there anyone against paying for subcuts? <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I am generally in favor of including a subcut in something the city does, but that's more if we continue with the, where we are. If we're going to 50 50, I don't see why you have to take the subcut out, because essentially you've already been up with the subcut. I think in, in terms of, of, of selling the subcut, and not maybe so much to the city council because they may understand it, but to the general population, I think that's a concept that's very difficult to necessarily grasp. So I, grasp. So I think there needs to be some very good supporting detail on what that really is. Sure kind of job by job or you know what does that look like and why is that a problem so it has to be a lot of education around that it'll be kind of actually like the education of curbs we use curbs to 
control water, we use them to control sewer, we keep people from driving up on your lawns, and we don't have to mark for snow plows. That was about what we did for curbs, and then after year one, there wasn't a ton of ex explanation about curbs. So it, it's going to have like a, you know, its initial experience. Right. And then Chip. Uh, I was just, I was interested in subcut before, but I'm, I guess I feel like I'm, there's only so much that we're going to be able to pay for. And I, I like going 50-50 rather than subcuts. Okay. The other point I want to make about subcuts is I think uh, I, I would like to try to keep this as simple as we can. <clears throat> and the, if we start making special categories for things, that just makes it more complicated. Mm -hmm. And if we okay. can, if it's going 50-50, then maybe we just keep subcuts in there. Uh, I, I, I think if we start carving that out and or carve it out for a year or two, it, the, 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 the formula gets pretty convoluted. Well, I think the one explanation that I actually liked from Ralph about <laughs> keeping it in was we just make it year one of whatever the transition is, and then the transition years come after. So I, mean, I would be for that if it was only four years, four remaining yeah, years. Yeah, I get that. So, so I think I agree with these guys that if we're going 50-50, why, why make it more complicated? Okay. Well, it, for me, it's really a, a fairness issue with respect to what the city you know, should have, if you will, should have maintained the road to, and for whatever reason didn't. And and the luck of the draw of having you know lived on a street that, or, or that the street just doesn't need it because the the, the, the glacial you know, <laughs> deposit that was there left sand behind rather than, than peak. So let, let me understand how, how that your idea might work, Ralph. Mm -hmm. if, it's a, if it's a $4 million job or you know a budget for the year, for the mm -hmm. first year, and let's say 20% or 800 grand is subcut, mm -hmm. and we are going to phase this in, let's say, over five years. So that, that the 50%, right? So it would be 4 million, 50%, so Two million would be phased in over five years. Am I, am I right? I mean, so this is again. Yeah, I, I, so, I'm so following that, what you're saying. Okay. Yep. So that would be four hundred thousand that would be phased in each year for five years. But we're going to do eight hundred thousand in year one because that's the subcut cost. And then what would we do in year two? Would we've already done it because of the eight hundred or well, I mean my recommendation wasn't five years, it was it was six years. Okay. That that year one was the subcut. About a million dollars worth, let's say. And 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 year one subcut could be a hundred thousand dollars. It could also be a million dollars. I mean that, that's the variability that I mean Chad Chad is talking about. So there there is no I mean it, it's so Ran, not, not random, but so particular to a given whatever neighborhood you're doing that uh, it isn't something that you can say, gee, that every year we're going to spend $800,000 on some kind or a million dollars. Well, and I, I think if your your original idea was with 100%, mm -hmm. right? So then the 20, the first year was some cut. So that yeah. really hit that 20%. What I'm hearing now is 50%, 50 50. And I wouldn't try to guess what the subcut is. Just do a transition, the 50 feet goal every, what is it, 12 and a half percent to get to 50 percent over five years. And you assume that that first year assessment of 12 and a half percent, roughly a subcut number, right? It's a little on the low end, so we might still be covering assessments, right? Still pay for that. But I wouldn't try to guess what next year, the whatever year one this subcut would be, because it could be 30, it could be 10, you know. Do I? Do I hear from you that you said you would like us to cover the subcut as a city or not necessarily in that what you just described? My description was don't guess on the subcut whatever year. Yeah, would you, you, would you be more comfortable with us taking subcut on as a city? I Understanding that we would find a way to pay for it if we did that? It would work either way. Okay. I mean, right? That's a council objective. Uh, yeah, but I'm trying to ask you an engineering thing. Do you think it's since Ralph and I kind of come at this from a fairness thing? 
do you think it's fair that uh, neighbor I don't think comments? it should be if you, if you want my opinion even if we hit 50% assessments in that 50% still could have a variation yeah. of about oh, half the number percent. ahead right. five to twelve and a half and is that really fair equitable by the randomness of buying a house that your assessment is 12% higher than somebody on the other side of town so that's the only piece that I think would be nice just getting it out of the assessment how we pay for it that's a different different concern and Don didn't have his mask on he'd be frowning at me right now so Ralph <laughs> would you be comfortable if we looked at our subcut proposal is just adding a year on to whatever year plan we do and then we could and then it could be explained to the council that several of us <coughs> recommend that we take this on first as our first year of transition or before you answer it could be an option of we do one option is you just leave it in the number and we just transition and we say the pros and cons of leaving it in the number. The other one is we get it out of, we still want to get here, but we take sub cut out and what's the pros and cons, right? The con is coming up with a big the cash in the first few years to cover it. The benefits are you don't have this variability. So it could be two options in here. Okay. Okay. If, if the task force Let's do it that way. Maybe it sounds like that might work better for our group. I mean, that, that's fine. It's just, you know, for, for me, the, the subcut is the, actually the easiest thing mm -hmm. to explain to people mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we're taking this out because is it really fair that you live on a street that I've got to dig down three feet to, to, to replace the, the peat that, that is underneath your road versus your road that's got pure sand and I don't, I, I, I take out an inch and, you know, I'm good to go. And so, uh, for me, that, that's a very easy explanation to make to people and one that they can say, yep, yeah, that's not fair. Yeah, and let's council, we can have yeah. the option to let council give let's, us feedback yeah, on that. Yeah, let's move off subject, because I don't want to run out of time since yeah. we've all made the effort to be here and do this. Um, so we're talking about transition time. So we've, I've heard five years, I've, or six, I've heard 10, I've heard 15. Does anyone have any more than 15 as a transition time unless you went to maths? Let's get all the streets done and then transition, because that's another option other than the 15, I assume, on the table. Correct? Right? Okay. So is 15 kind of our max right now? 15 is what? 15 years is our max number of years for transition? Okay. So you can vote a couple times. Who's most comfortable? <laughs> I just want to kind of see where your you're comfortable level judge. Come on. I know, God. <laughs> I can you're, on, tell. you're on tape. Yeah. yeah. Vote off. Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you can only vote once. First, the first <laughs> round. You can only vote once. Who's comfortable with on um, 100% going to taxes if we do it in five years? I would be comfortable. Okay. You only get to vote once. Oh. oh <laughs> see, that's, that's why I said no, they could say, you know, that's, I knew he would need to be voting more than once. But the problem is that you say comfortable. Okay, fine. So there's a uh, you in have favor of who prefers. Okay, for 100%, Chip, how many years would be your first choice? Me or, yeah. David? or David? David, 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 I'm sorry. For 100%? Yeah. 25. 25, okay. Uh, 10. Matt. 25. Ralph. 6. Kathy. Do you want a number here, even though, like, I prefer the 50 50? <clears throat> well, you can say you have no comfort level with this and you're not going to choose. Oh, this is it. This is it. We vote once. Yeah. For the hundred. For the hundred. Yeah. For the hundred. I yeah. go with Rob. Six. Uh, six is good. I'll say Put fifteen. Put me down for six. And I don't want hundred percent taxes, so I'm not voting on this one. I'll just tell you that right now. <coughs> okay. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, well, then take me off too. I'm sorry. I because I'm in the other camp. Fifty-fifty. Okay. Let's go back to this one. So, David, 50 50, transition time. Lowest number is 10. 
Uh, I could be comfortable five to ten. <laughs> Seven and a half. No. <laughs> like, uh, Matt. Fifteen. Comment. Five. Ralph. Five, assuming that uh, we leave the sub cut in, which I don't think is the right thing to do. Ten. Okay. <laughs> so what do you do now? <laughs> well, that's when I said I didn't think we'd all arrive on one. I was hoping we'd coalesce a little bit closer on this, but we haven't. <laughs> Does anyone see an area? Well, I think, More I don't know if we have there. Yeah. Hmm? We've got five, we've got 10, we've got 15, you've got three times. So let's. I'll just make a suggestion that we could run models at five, yeah. 10, and 15. That's a good idea on these and then <coughs> share them with the group at our next, because we're going to have another meeting before the council oh, we'll work more. session. Yeah, and the work session is November 17th. 17th. We got another meeting okay. in, in two weeks, our one hour meetings. And we could run some of these scenarios and provide more. So we basically have three scenarios here and let's just go with, let's skip that five to 10 and go with three there. And can I ask a question? Though? Yeah. So we can run scenarios all day <laughs> but the question I have for the group is, what information do you need to make a decision? Yep. Is it the tax rate? Is it what is it? Because that's what's going to help us help you. Well, the first thing the council is going to ask you is, what does it do to the taxes for our city? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing they're going to ask you. I can hear you again. The council is going to say, what does it do to the taxes? The tax. So what do we, what do we so have, have to ask do? How much is it increase again, going mm -hmm. back to the 5% versus 60%? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They're going to want to know what it increases. And part of that number is we can tell them what well, it, it would increase if we were doing it this year, but as you said, it's not a static thing. It changes every year. So there would have to be a, the conversation of, <coughs> of what does inflation do, the cost of asphalt, et cetera. Yeah, I would think the other thing that this is just one piece of unfunded projects that we're working on. We're working on the capital improvements plan right now that has over a hundred million dollars of unfunded projects. You know, so it's really this balancing act to you know accomplish the priorities. But for this task force, they've been tasked with the yep. street funding force. So you're going to go and have some recommendations for council. And then they're the ones that need to balance yep. that. Absolutely. Yeah, you've already made a step this year in that tax increase to start funding the CIP, though. Yep. Huge increase. Which never happened when I was on council. Okay. Could, could I ask the people who are in favor of the longer terms for each of those things to talk about why? You like that versus getting it done quicker? I like it because uh, we just got through paying an assessment uh, about five or six years ago. And the longer you stretch it out, the less of an impact you have on people who are freshly assessed. Kathy, I was, what I was number? Thinking exactly yeah. what he just said. Okay. I'm still paying an assessment. Oh, I like I it stretched out longer. And that's why I'm thinking a longer time. So it's. Yeah. Well, it, it's a little, it eases it in for those who, who have paid. To me, it mirrors also the fact that right now we allow 15 years to pay assessments, should you choose. So there's, yeah, there's some logic as there. Matt said, some continuity there in choosing that. Well, then, so, you know, if you think about it as like, if this is a graph, I'm sorry if you can't see me, right? <laughs> but if this is assessment and this is the other thing, it sort of phases in so the people over here are paying less on the um, mm -hmm. annual assessment, whereas you know there's less of a bite if you're yeah. kind of like meeting in the middle. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then, like the last people that do it, I mean, they're going to be like, well, why am I even assessed more than fifty percent? Because I'm only assessed at fifty-three percent. But you know, uh, I don't know if that helps. But I mean, you know, the, the probably the, the people that 
ironically, they get it worse. Um, annual basis, in my opinion, would be like the ones that get it in year 15, because they're going to have the higher. But it's also lower. Right. I was going to say, what are the problems that we face, and this is what that you know, this our community, right? So, so there's this creeping outlier problem where all of a sudden you get one year, you get really like every once in a while you get this really big uh, special assessment that causes me to say, look, we start with five years and bring it down, you know, more quickly to what where the part of it is, is paid out of taxes. <coughs> Be more easily, our like our community would be more easily able to deal with that than having to wait. You know, for example, for you know thirty-three thousand dollar special assessment, uh, I can I can see that you know getting twenty percent off the first year. You know, I mean, if it's more doable than having to pay you know hundred percent waiting ten years for this. So this is this is where I'm coming from. So I'm on the other side of that of that. Uh, so I think I'll summarize. Bridge. You're saying you'd like a quicker transition because of these outlier neighborhoods. That's right. We wouldn't be able to. When would we be able to do some of these neighborhoods in 15 years versus in five? We'll be down to the number, and most of them we can do as a city engineering department just on the pavement condition, and we run it, and the benefit test pass. Right. That's what you're saying. That's right. The shorter time frame is so, easier. I mean, I I I'd rather see the special at the city picks up the, the, the bill sooner than later. And that's, that's where I'm coming from. But uh, clearly, you, you're also, right, to the extent that my bill would be spread over a longer period of time, that would be to, to my advantage. But as Matt has said before, I end up paying that anyway if I sell the house. So it's not as if I'm going to be gaining it, because often the seller ends up paying that. So. Well, you could sell your house this year and you have no pending assessment, so you have no reason to have to pay it this year. That, right, right, if I were to. If it gets this. to be pending, let's say, three years from now, when all of a sudden we're on the 15-year plan, and I don't know, what is that, about 20% is off on the 15-year plan after three years? Is that 21%? Um, could we, and we took, if we took the subcut off on us, and we went to 15 years, and in three years we decided to do this project, and let's say it's in today's dollars, just for. Yeah. So we're taking three thousand dollars off, so he's down to let's say twenty-nine something. Yep. And then three years from that is twenty percent off, maybe. So it's about five thousand dollars off. So could you prove for twenty-four, twenty-five thousand dollars that we gave him enough benefit, or do we have to wait to do his project till year five? I think I could support it on ninety-five percent of the properties. There'd still be a couple that are going to be yeah, because it's the problem one. So, <laughs> so, so one option is is to do. I mean, even though ours might get postponed, and ours our streets, as you know, is one of the lowest grades. Oh, in yeah, they're yeah. incredible. But one option would be to find it, to have the outliers, like these big ones, done later than earlier, and that would help in terms of the you know if it's a five year thing, right? Well, I think. I like putting together a five and a fifteen year transition and laying out the pros and cons. Yeah, yeah maybe so. Right? That, that, that are we yeah. getting too, too yeah. much into yeah, the Yeah, we're probably are getting too much into the Let us run some models. But usually I hear you talking about your particular situation. You want, so you want a shorter yeah. time frame. Yeah. Which was supported by Ralph also. Supports yeah, shorter. Yeah. So I that's that side. I guess I want to get some clarification on the hundred percent tax side. Okay, um, let's what's, move. If, if Ann's ready to move over there. Mm -hmm. So in that scenario, we had six years to 25 years. Six, 10, and 25. So do we run those three scenarios? Well, 25 is basically status quo. We're not changing anything and we're switching to taxes. When we and after 25 years. years. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You'd have a transition, a long transition to get there. Yeah, there's really no transition. So we're going to come up with something. Once we finish this series, we'll do something different. Oh, well, well, the, the well no, this, this not the concept is that it does have a transition in that we are charging additional funds. Oh, oh I see. 4%. Yeah, yeah, it it isn't that we yeah. wait 25 years yeah. to go to 100%. Okay. It's that That's what? you're at 95%, 90%, right. 85%. Yeah. Okay, right. I'm fine with right. that too. Right. So does your year change then, knowing that? No. I could go either way. Well, I mean, I would 
take my name off that list entirely because I don't think you. Uh, my well, assumption would be that you kept it the same for 25 years and then you switch. But with are you caveat, collecting any money so that at yeah, the end of 25 caveat, years? I'd like to have some that's just what we're talking. That's just actually what we're talking about. Is that so, yes, we were collecting money. So, so that at the end of 25 years, oh, I see. You want to wait different. from. Not do anything for 25 yeah. years, so no reduction at all. No the trust that's system. right. Okay. And that one, I don't think we could support the benefit issue. We would be, we would have a, some neighborhoods where we could not even do a project in 25 years because we couldn't justify 100% assessments like we're doing now. I think we have to move off 100% assessments. So, so if we transition, is it just because of the, the 30,000 is it inflation? Is that why we are where we are? No, I think it's more related to density of neighborhoods. So if you we compare park lots with all first. the apartments, those assessments were two hundred dollars per apartment compared to. Um, we we'll keep coming back to Med's neighborhood, but that was thirty-two thousand. Just because there's not enough RUs, it's a divisor. Just don't do the roads and let them crumble. <laughs> and start coming uh, that, that so I feel like we have to get off one hundred percent assessments. Okay, so twenty-five well, isn't even an option. But that raises a point that that was was in the. Well, I'd be, the, the agenda was, okay, so how is that fund that we're not going to touch for 25 years, what tax is necessary to, to do that? So what, what tax rate are we going to implement? And two, how big does that fund get? Because unless it gets, I mean, I just, I, I don't know how the math works when you get to the end, if you've only put aside $4 million, then you use all of that in year one. Now you're right back to where you, you started. And well, so. and isn't this still considered transition? So year four, you're paying 4% less on your assessment and year, year one, I mean, in year two, you're paying 8% yeah. in year three, you're paying 12%. So you're doing the flow. So this one is not a trust. Uh, well, but, but, but my answer was a trust. But, 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 but that's so never come up in this whole discussion that since four o'clock. That's, that's right. It's, it's, it's different. Than <coughs> that is the third idea. And that third idea hasn't come up till just now. That no, no, we, no, Matt and I have talked about it before. Yeah, in other meetings, but so far tonight. Oh, yes. Correct. No, yes. And that's the one I don't think we could support if we keep 100% assessments for 25 more years. We would. We'd be back to council saying. Well, we no, need no. Data. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, yes, that's I get Matt's what, idea, yes, I get right? what you're saying. Keep 100 percent assessments for 25 years. That you years. could support it if it changed potentially if it changed assessments, but it's just incrementally. Yeah, and I would. And what I heard David say until we get down to below 70 percent, he's yeah, nervous. Exactly. And he's going to be our new city attorney full time. Yep. Okay. Beginning of the year. Well, find a new city attorney. <laughs> <laughs> He's like <not> here. <laughs> David, he didn't mean that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Actually, I think it's quite thoughtful. <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, part of the question, you know, for me is, uh, you know, the neighboring cities, you know, have, have, are looking at 25%, 25%. 40 uh,40 is the And, and 40%. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so what's, I'll say, what's, what's, what's our rationale to, for picking 50% versus something else? It isn't, but I think what we can show is the math, if you at least split it some way. So it may be that then the council says, well, what if, the assessment was less. What if we want a mere? Was forty percent was what David said? He said so he's used that in the industry. That My examples went down to twenty-five percent assessment. Right, but but I remember hearing David saying forty percent was what he saw the he's most. The average of all the cities. Okay, most cities are at forty. So okay, but that's that's just less. I mean, that's just lower cost math. I mean, let's. Let's simplify this at least to this point. Yeah, a little tweak, ten percent, one way or the other. Or the right. Other, if we want to go, I think that is just going to get us confusing. But when we for, for me, it's just more what's the rationale of picking one percentage versus the other. I mean, a hundred percent. The rationale is 
that it's a city, it's a city, right? A city benefit. It, right. It's a it's a yes. city. Kind of what yes. Matt says. He considers it something yes. the city should provide. In the long term. In the long term. I don't know that I have support property tax necessarily, but some right. sort of a everybody pays it as a user fee would be my preference because we're all using it every month. So why do we only pay it once every fifty years? Well, and I'm of the at least at fifty percent assessment. I know I'm assessing churches and things for their use and not just giving them a benefit without any cost. Not that there are a lot of them, you know, percentage-wise, but when you're talking about that fairness word, which is what we all kind of got caught on that first few meetings, you know, it's never going to be perfectly fair. What we're trying to find is something that's reasonably fair, I guess. And so for me, that's just one other of the little fair things. Now, are we missing anything? Matt, do you want us to do? I mean, I don't know. If we're going to do some sort of big transition, I don't know that the trust fund is necessary. The reason why I thought about the trust fund is it sort of was a way that you could do a soft, say like 20% of what you'd actually need to collect to do it on an annual basis for 25 years. Then you end up with a five-year balance so that your necessity of doing this late switch, you know, now we're done assessing, now we're just going to hammer everybody for who's been sitting there with a 15-year thing with the, with the franchise fee. Mm -hmm. My goal of that was that that would allow them to have a balance so that they could be like, okay, well, it's going to be a lot less because we're going to spend this balance down for, say, 10 years, and then we can kind of do the transition at the 25-year mark. Does that make sense to you, mm -hmm. Don? The reason I don't like that is that I'd be paying in now, and I may move out in you know, five years or three years, <coughs> and I see no current benefit to what I paid in. So the, well, the, in the back end, the reason why it's like that, in my opinion, is it's a user group. So we have the money sitting there because the utility that you're using every day as you're driving. It's just like every time you fill up your gas tank, you pay 28 and a half cents a gallon for your gas tax. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you pay that money is it goes into the, the kitty and then it fixes all the streets in the state of Minnesota, it flows all the way down to the city. So that and we get that city. through the 50 50. Well, I mean. 50 50, I'm paying in through my property tax every year. Right. Whether, whether my streets get done or not. Right. But I mean, my, my viewpoint would be that I, I view franchise fee as a more fair way to do it because, I mean, I don't know. To me, that's. It's a per household basis. And it seems like every household, as we've heard in these meetings, generates the same number of trips, whether you're six million or whether you're, you know, three hundred thousand. So if that's the case, then it doesn't really matter. It's a user fee. But but it's really I mean it's it's really an in infrastructure issue. It's not a user fee issue, it's a, it's an infrastructure fee issue. Oh. Uh, I, I I don't see it as a user okay. fee it be, because you know what we, you know what 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 Chad has said is that uh, big trucks, more traffic, doesn't cause the wear and tear in the streets. It's it's the weather that causes the primary wear and tear in the streets. I mean, it, it, at least that's what I recall. That so it, it to the the need for replacement of the street isn't the wear and tear of traffic but rather the wear and tear of weather. Is that is, true, Chad? Is the primary driver. No, it's, the, it's, it's a combination. It's easel, so it's the single axle loading. And we design the roads for the truck weights. Right. That's really what does, I mean, the freeze thaw cycles are huge and the loading of trucks. Well, so I think it's a, it's a combination of both. And the other main component is whether you do regular mill and overlays. And it's the maintenance because, piece. Yep. If yeah. you have a street, it goes along at this level, and then it goes yep. down, but then it starts to go really quickly. So unless you go and you invest a little bit right. of money and yep. bring it back up, then it's cheaper yep. to do it. It's like it's doing intervention. But you funded that now, correct? Yep. Yep. We're not right. worrying right. about that. Right. Right. And so since we only have 12 more months, there's one part of this that we haven't discussed, and that's State Aid Streets. So, uh, state Aid Streets, the one where right now we get money from the state 
80% of the street is paid for from that state aid money, right? And What's the gas tax Matt was talking about? Right, so and 20% is paid by the homeowner. I live on a state aid street right now. So only 40 miles of our streets are municipal state aid. So it's the bigger streets that get more traffic. So the thing is it's more regional in nature. My understanding was if we got to some agreement on the local side, mm -hmm. If we're going to 50-50 on local, then I would probably do a similar equation on MSA and see how the numbers worked out. Mm -hmm. I'd yes. like to make one comment, by the way, which is a little bit special to our area, but it, ha it so happens that this you know, hilly area is, right, is actually kind of a, almost an MSA type of street. It's because it's between Cahill uh, on the one hand and Gleason on the other, and it's the only other pathway that a lot of people take going from, from high yeah. school or from I know, but it's so not it down down road. It doesn't yeah. trigger the traffic. And also, it was of the trucks, and it's downhill as well. Yeah. So it's, in a way, it's like... We it designate them, we vote on the state aid streets. They just pulled Hanson Road off a state aid road to put something else on while I was still in council, I yeah. think. Because I was the, the only one who voted against it. We put it. the highest traffic volumes on there, because we get more money than if we have more. So your streets didn't even get close to classifying for MSA. Mm -hmm. but, so traffic, we try to convert the MSAs to some sort of formula like we have here, so instead of being 80-20, it'd be 50-50, or? Well, it'd be, if it's 80-20 and we're reducing assessments by half, then I'd look at it, running it at a 90-10. That yeah. would impact how many MSA streets we could do, because that money is, is actually shrinking. So then there's a broader question of, should we make up that 10% of the assessment with property taxes on the MSA system? I thought first, my, my idea was let's get to the local streets because that's 80%. Okay. Run some scenarios, get some options, and then we'll come and talk about MSA and those impacts. So it might be we lower assessments to 10%, but do we need a little bit extra for MSA um, to, to make that 10% why, why would you, why would the 50-50 has an implication for the MSA from 80 20 to 90 10. Is there any reason? Other, is it an equity? And maybe it's not. Maybe it's but not. Maybe we leave resident, it, MSA at 80 20. Maybe we leave it. But I think if we cut it to 50%, these assessments, the MSA street assessments, are going to be higher than local streets because they, they're they built to different standards. It's more expensive. MSA, I'm get, even at 20%, I'm almost at 7,000. Whereas the locals at well, so now I'm going to all of a sudden flip and people in MSA are going, I'm paying more than local streets. Well, so MSAs are more 50? expensive then, in a way? Yeah, because they have to be built for more traffic. So Concord right. that I live on has yes. all okay. the school buses and the yeah. people driving to school, you know, for nine, ten months of the year. That's an MSA street route. So, so actually, I mean, that, in my mind, is an argument to go to 100% mm. uh, tax base. Because at that point, you you use <coughs> the MSA money to, to, to pay for whatever street you're going to do that, that year. No. We can't. Yeah. You can only use it on those 40 miles. On, right, on those, on those 40 miles. Yeah. But you, you make up whatever difference it is. I mean. Yeah, the program is underfunded. And I don't think we want to get into that at this point in the evening. Yeah. So I think MSA so should be another topic we come back to. Okay, we're going to have to come yeah. back to MSA because we're going to yeah. run out of time. Could you, could you just do one run for me on the trust fund so we, as we have future conversations going forward? Um, one thought that I had had is raising $100,000 a month with investment income. So figuring out like what the impact that would be to a utility payer. So you want to do it as a franchise fee? What do you think, 100? Well, you said you I, mean, I, I think it's like $5 a month per person, and then you'd be able to have about $40 million of the stuff you talked about. Oh, for yeah, trust 25 years for a trust fund. You want to use a different term? Yeah. Can we? Well, street fund. We'll call it a street fund. That's street fund. Because in governmental accounting, trust fund actually means something that I don't yeah. think we. That's fine. That's right. Street fund's fund. Anyway, if you could just. Do and I think you said that investment what your growth is at, it's about you know, 25 years at 100,000 a month, maybe do like 100,000, 50,000, you know, something, make, pick three numbers. Does that make sense to you, Don? Mm -hmm. As long as you don't call it Chad's slush fund. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're good. We're going to put it in a lockbox. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we got three options. Don and I will do some homework and we'll prepare for our next meeting in two weeks and say this is. We're going to go back to WebEx. Yeah, well, that's we okay with everybody. Yeah. You good with that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
uh, also, uh, I think Chad suggested as well, since, uh, since Ralph feels strongly about the subcut, you may actually want to, you know, like break that down, right? You know, I'm going to do that with subcut, subcut ones subcut. with and without it. Yeah. And then I'm going to just try to get key points so we can Very, no, quickly okay. just take Absolutely. a glance and, and the group might yeah, say, yeah. no, take that out or this. So, sure. I mean, you saw Don's got a lot of it already set up, so mm -hmm. it's pretty easy to do. And I'm going to try to bring it down to something that the council can look at in a snapshot. That's what I want to get you in two weeks. Now, the funny thing about this is that um, Bob Stewart, who used to be on the council, I talked to him the other day, and one time when we were wrangling with this, he wanted to go by percent down to get to 50-50 going down, and he had it figured out. I think he was maybe 10% a year. But So when I told him we were meeting and talking about this, he said, oh, I think I still have my notes. I could give them to you. <laughs> oh, you have the notes. He sent them to me, so I got okay. his, his idea. So he's feeling really good right now about our work. So anything um, else before we leave? Yes, good meeting. On the MSAs, I thought we kind of agreed, and maybe I'm wrong, that whatever we did for everybody, we do for MSAs, which to me meant if we go 50-50, they go 50-50. But you're saying you'd see more like a... A 90-10 versus that the wouldn't well it wouldn't be fair because they have a way higher cost to being built because they have to be built to a different standard than the street in front of your house. I think I'll bring that information. To right, you. but I'd like to see some dollar information about that. Okay. As an aside, can I just make one comment? I, I really like going using that we're using percentages and not dollar amounts because you look at what some of the other cities do. When they cap it at a certain dollar mm -hmm. amount, I mean, it just makes it crazy variable. So this is dynamic. Yeah. Hopefully we can resolve this once and never come back. Yeah. I, I, I also know. thought about that, and I agree with you. Because yeah. dollar amounts would have to change, and then you'd have to have this task force meet every five years. And I think we're going to be exhausted after we finish with this one. Uh, I had brought in the dollar amount in one of my, my, one of my uh, PowerPoint, early not PowerPoint, yeah. but toilet and I think I, I understand. It, it's, it complicates things. So I'm fine. Okay. Um, Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.